What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world? I would like to welcome you back to the Real Talk with Zuby podcast. Today's episode is being recorded all the way out in Dubai. We are recording this one in person because this is not just any interview. This is a top special interview. It's been highly requested, hotly anticipated. This is actually this guest's second time on the podcast. We recorded way back in January 2019 before either of us were anywhere near as well known as we are now. And without further ado, this is the one and only Top G, Andrew Tate. What's up, bro? Good to be here, my friend. Good, Good to, to see you, here. man. Good to see you. Dude, it's been a long time since we, not since we last spoke, but since we last spoke publicly in a way that everyone's able to hear us. You were actually the fourth guest on my podcast when I just started it. Wow. So... So much stuff has happened in the past almost four years at this point. Yeah. But first thing, man, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, the Matrix is obviously trying to destroy me in real time, but they have failed. So as long as I'm still breathing until they decide to try and do something about that, it's a happy day. All in all, I'm, I'm pretty good. Yeah. What's it been like for you over the past couple of months? I mean, I've been seeing this watching. I've been watching this happen in real time. But what's your experience actually been like? Um, I mean, mentally, it's been fine. However, I've been very aware and very, uh, as it was happening, I was very aware of how much it would mentally affect the average person, if that makes sense. So although I'm completely fine with what they've tried to do to me, I've been sitting here thinking, if I was a normal dude, I'd be in serious trouble right now. Like, not just financially, not just your economics, but genuinely how you feel. I... Uh, when I was canceled, when they tried their very, very best to lie about me and then delete me from all social medias and continue to lie about me, when you have the entire world trying to say you're something you're not or convince the populace that you're dangerous when you aren't or convince the world that you're a bad person when you know you're not, and a lot of people obviously believe it, then you start getting death threats, your family start getting death threats and there's safety concerns. And I was thinking, if I was a normal dude living a normal life right now, this would be a serious problem. Luckily, I'm not a normal dude, which... Um, I put a life together that made me difficult to damage long ago, long before this, because I knew to a degree something like this was going to happen. But yeah, it was certainly an interesting few months when they began the, the attack. Yeah. And when you talk about the Matrix attacking you, for people who are not familiar with the terminology or maybe even the story, give us a rundown of actually what's played out. Sure. Well, I, I, I call the world the Matrix very simply. If the people who have seen the movie, they will know that our body heat inside of the movie, the body heat of humans is being harvested and used. And they occupy our minds with a false reality to keep us producing body heat long enough for the machines to function. And I believe that's a perfect analogy of what happens in the world today. I believe that our labors and our intellects and our work is basically being exploited from us and extracted. And to keep our minds occupied, they purport a false reality. Perhaps it's not a computer simulation like the movie, but it's certainly computer controlled. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the social media companies and the media companies can control the information people have access to, and they'll delete an entire side of the argument for anybody who tries to talk against it, then they are creating a false reality. And people are buying into this false reality so that they can stay asleep long enough to continue to be a slave. So I think the Matrix is a perfect example of what's happening in the world today. And anybody who stands up and speaks loudly up against the Matrix, if you do it too loud, too long, sooner or later they see you as a problem, they want you to go away. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's three stages to that. First, they try and delete you everywhere and cancel you like they've done to me. The second stage is put you in jail for no reason. Mm -hmm. And the third jail, the third stage is to kill you. So when one of my lives have, have been used up now, so it's kind of scary, you know? You're kind of sitting there going, well, usually at this stage, people go away. Mm -hmm. But if I don't go away, what comes next? So that's kind of scary. But basically, the media machine, the Matrix, decided that the impact I was having on the populace was not beneficial to them and their goals and their aims, and that whatever I'm teaching people or making people think about isn't necessarily aiding their agenda. They, I think in, with people in my position, um, some of them will sell their soul or some of them will change their mind and shut up. I'm not that guy. They tried to, I think with a certain degree, they promise you fame and money or they'll unshadow ban you or they'll let you be a certain way. They'll, they'll let you get bigger and let your ego be satisfied if you'll be quiet. I refused and then uh, they decided to try and delete me from everywhere. So that's what happened. Yeah. And I think when it comes to the deletions, I don't think people are aware of just how hard they've gone at you. I think people know they took your, your Facebook and Instagram and YouTube down. But 
what's been the extent of it? Yeah, so they took my, even I can't remember everything, bro. They took my Uber, my Airbnb, which is funny because I never used Airbnb. When they sent me a cancellation email, it's the only one I replied to. I was like, because they sent me some email. Hi, my name's David. I'm from Airbnb. And, and the idea of inclusion is behind Airbnb's philosophy and blah, blah, some crap about how I'm a bad person. And I replied, brother, I don't even know, didn't even know I had an Airbnb account. I can't remember ever booking an Airbnb. I don't know why you're trying to feel involved, but get <laughs> fucked. So I told them to fuck off. But Uber, Airbnb, my payment processor for my business, Stripe, uh, my Gmail, my Instagram, my Facebook, uh, my Discord, banks, four uh, banks in the UK banned me. Um, uh, TransferWise banned me. Name, an, name a company. Yeah. They banned me. Like it was, it was crazy. So everybody was banning me from in, everything instantly. And the optimists of the world believe that it's just social pressure and that one company bans you and the others just fall in line. Whereas me, perhaps a pessimist, but truthfully a realist, I understand that it's very orchestrated and it's designed to teach you a lesson. They want to teach you a lesson. They want you to be broke. They want you to struggle to function in society and they want you to have no voice. Yeah. And that's what they want to do. They want to make you scared to continue to talk. What's up, guys? This is Zuby, a.k.a. Top Z, and today's podcast is sponsored by TradeInTheZone.com. If you're interested in modern wealth creation, you need to check out TradeInTheZone.com. Trade in the Zone is a nightly stock report from 30-year trading legend Jeff Farley. Every week, Jeff shares four of his best trades by uncovering the little-known stories behind the stocks to tell you why the trade looks good now. You'll hear familiar names like Apple, Costco, Boeing, as well as small, exciting, undiscovered stocks you've never heard of before. Want Trade in the Zone free for three weeks? You don't even need to enter your payment info to get started. There's no catch. Sign up, get three weeks free, and decide for yourself after seeing the real-time trades. But listen up. Trade in the Zone is only accepting 300 new members, so do this now. If you really want to escape the matrix, there's no simpler way to get started. Go to tradeinthezone.com now, and sign up for your free three-week trial. That's tradeinthezone.com. Now back to the interview. Man, what's so crazy is listening back to the interview we did over three and a half years ago, you foretold this happening. Yeah. So this is almost four years ago. Yeah. And you said, I think at this point you were on your fifth Twitter account, yeah. but you were still on everything else. You weren't on too many people's radar. You had a following, but not to the insanity it is now. Yeah. So how were you able to see that coming? I, I think it's just basic human nature. I, I don't think the people who are running the world are much different than you and I. Perhaps they have different resource and different capability, but I think that human nature stays constant throughout. Mm -hmm. And me, I run a fairly large empire now. Let's say I have 200 or 300 people working for me. If there was somebody inside of my organization which ignored my orders and inspired other people inside of my organization to be insubordinate, then I would fire them. So when you're running a country or the world and you are, and there's somebody inside of the world that's inspiring others to be insubordinate, then you're going to want to fire them to some degree. And I understood that what they're trying to do to the populace, I truly believe is evil. I don't know whether they believe it's evil or they believe it's good. That's their decision. I don't know their moral backing, but I personally believe it's evil and I stand counter to it. So why would they want me to have a voice? Why would they want me to have influence? For the same reason I wouldn't want an employee in my, in my company to have influence when he's countering my, my narrative. Mm -hmm. They don't want me to have a voice. So I always understood this. I knew that sooner or later they were going to just look at me and think he's too big of a problem to exist. And uh, they have to be very – they have to pretend to be balanced and fair because when you're tyrannical, the number one thing you don't want people to realize is that you're tyrannical, mm -hmm. right? Right. So you have a massive voice, especially during COVID. It was me and you, the number one biggest anti-COVID guys. <laughs> we were absolutely completely about it. But they have to let some people talk against their agendas because if they delete everybody instantly, then it shows that they're tyrannical and it collapses. So you have to pretend they're balanced and fair, and they do. But if you reach a critical mass where you're having a genuine in impact and effect at a certain point, I think that they just come for you and shut you up. I, your Twitter account's massive and you say so many great things on Twitter. If you were, if you had the same following on other platforms that you had on Twitter, you'd be gone. Yeah. That's, that's just what happens. You get to a certain point of critical mass and they go, oh, okay, he has to go. Yeah. And when they actually started canceling you on these different platforms, what did they say? Was there a specific policy that they claimed that you violated or so on? Cause I've had people, I've been traveling around 
to lots of different places this year. And in the past few months, I've been to a few different countries, a few different cities. And there's been all this, I've heard so many different people talking about you, sometimes to me, sometimes just overhearing conversations. And some people are saying, oh, it was because of this, or so he, he did this, or he said this, or whatever. And there's all this speculation going on. But what did they claim that it actually was? Well, that's a good question. Some, some companies gave me a reason, some companies didn't. So Meta and YouTube never even sent me an email. They just deleted me completely and in sync were these massive press releases, which obviously they had prepared statements to release to the press, mm -hmm. but they never gave me an official reason by email. So they've, they've never even told me why. And the reason for that is because I think they understood that they're probably going to end up in court and they want to be able to make up their reason as to go along in the courtroom. They don't want to stick to a reason on the day. In fact, I've heard from reliable sources that terms and conditions for both of these companies have changed post my banning. Mm -hmm. So they've tried to protect themselves. So that's that. Uh, a few other companies, the ones who deleted me, like Airbnb, et cetera, it was the typical generic community guidelines, standards, don't meet our current expectations of that. It's all vague garbage. And when you click accept to these companies, you're accepting terms and conditions that are so ridiculously vague. They basically mean we can ban anyone at any time mm -hmm. without reason because we decided to. So they don't have to give you a reason, mm -hmm. you know? The reason that they told the media is that I'm somehow hateful and misogynistic and I'm dangerous to the world, which I think anybody with a brain knows is absolutely not true. I have opinions, yes, but those opinions aren't going to be out here detrimenting society, not the way that most of the genuine evil that the mainstream media purports out to the children is actually damaging society. Mm -hmm. The reason they deleted me is because I was massively influential and they didn't like the direction in which I was pushing the youth of the world, which was to think for themselves. So they thought I had to go. That's that's what the real reason they did it. And they never even told me why. Why do you think they're so scared of that message? They're scared of a message. They're always going to be scared of any message that comes from somebody that people idolize and respect, which is basically telling people to be strong physically and mentally and to resist a slave mind and to think for themselves because their number one agenda is to create worker drones. They don't want you to think for yourself, which means that to a degree you need to be weak, both mentally and physically. If you're weak, both mentally and physically, one, you're not prepared to defend your ideas, but especially if you're mentally weak, this is such a, a big point of it. And this is why I get so much flack for saying depression isn't real and all these things. If you're mentally weak and you're concerned in your own mind about even living day-to-day -day life because you find it so, such a struggle, there's no way you're going to take on a larger battle than yourself. You're not going to start resisting enslavement. You're not going to start fighting against COVID mandates. You're not going to be doing any of that stuff because you're too busy looking in the mirror, crying your eyes out. You're selfish. You're self-obsessed. Happy people don't do that. Happy people, okay, my, my life is good. I'm happy. I want my family to be happy. I want my community to be good. I care about my country. They, they, that's why they don't want you to be happy. They don't want to be miserable, weak, and, and they want to delete any morality from your brain because it's a baseline morality that prevents them from installing the slave programming. by getting you to a point where you no longer think for yourself, they can just tell you anything is true. That, that's what they're doing to us right now, Zuby. What they're doing is convincing people to ignore their own eyes. When you walk down, when you walk into the toilet as a woman and you see a big man and you have to pretend <laughs> that that's not a man, you have to pretend it's not. Yeah. Because if you, if you acknowledge what your own eyes are telling you, you're the enemy, right? Once they can convince you to ignore your own eyes, well, that's the end of the game, isn't it? Now, now it doesn't matter if they see the sky is blue because the media said the sky is red. And that's the final level of slave programming they're trying to get us to. They want us to ignore, ignore our own eyes, ignore our own ears, ignore our innate morality because we, we're all born with an innate morality inside of us. We believe certain things are wrong and right instinctually. They want us to ignore that. Get rid of all of it. Empty brains, empty hard disks, and plug in the new program for whatever they think is applicable at the time. And it's it's... It's going to be tyranny and slavery. What else would they want to program into us? Yeah. It's so interesting because when we spoke in, in 2019, and of course, every time we've, we've met in person and discussed this stuff privately, we always talk about the, there's this fear. People are afraid. Yeah. People are afraid. In 2019, we were talking about people being afraid to speak out. You were like, I'm the only guy who's willing to say this stuff. No one else is saying it. And it's fun. It's weird because... We were, we were talking about stuff being crazy in 2019. This is pre-pandemic. Yeah. 
This is pre a lot of weird things that have happened. This is when, uh, you know, drag queen story time was just kicking off and there weren't too many videos coming out of all the, all, all the madness, which is now on people's radar, which I think is good. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's more pushback and more people speaking on it. But a theme I've noticed is when I travel around, when I do events in different cities, different countries, whether I'm in the UK, Australia, USA, and so on, everyone is saying that they're afraid to speak out. First thing people always say is, thank you. Thank you for speaking out. Thank you. You're courageous. You're brave. I appreciate you voicing it. I can't do, I can't say what you're saying. I can't do that. So even in the so-called freest countries in the world, people are feeling like they cannot they, they, they can't speak. There's this pressure that's causing them to self-censor yeah. beyond what is a reasonable limit to the point where, as you said, people will deny things that are objective facts, things that you can see with your own eyes, things that you can hear, and everyone's just going with it. And I think a lot of the nonsense we dealt with over the past two and a half years, some of which is still going on, it was just that playing out on a massive, massive scale. So how do you think that Question people always ask is how did we how did we get here? Yeah, cowardice is the problem. The world is is full of cowards. We suffer from a pandemic of cowardice. We've never suffered from any other pandemic the last three years. People are absolutely not really cowards, and they do to me what they did to me to scare people. Mm -hmm. If you tell the average person you're going to lose contact with basically everyone you can speak to, you're not going to have a voice anymore, you're not going to have a bank account, you're not going to be able to make money online, you're not going to be able to move anywhere, you're not going to be able to transact, we're going to wreck you head to toe, the average person can't deal with that, right? On top of the, fa that, the fact that the average person is employed and they're scared of losing their job, scared of their employer, I'm in a unique situation because I'm extremely difficult to hurt. But the average person, as soon as you hurt their money, their life is over, right? And, and that's what we've got. We've got to a, a level of cowardice amongst the population where people are just going to sit there and ignore objective reality because they're scared of having this cancellation weapon used against them. So yeah, it's, it, you're right. It's not that people don't agree with us. It's not that we're not saying the things that everyone knows are intrinsically true. It's that everybody is afraid to say it. And that can only end when everybody stands up and stops agreeing and playing this game and stops being cowards. We need mass numbers of people to say, no, I'm allowed an opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what? Nigel Farage, and I don't, I'm not, since UKIP ended, I don't even know about his politics nowadays. I don't even know what he's doing. But he says something that was really interesting. He was asked about who runs the world. And I guess the person was trying to set him up for a question about the elites. And he said, truthfully, I'll tell you who runs the world. We do. Yes. Because we decide how much of this crap we're going to put up with. The problem is we're putting up with too much of it. Problem is everyone's a coward. And, and you're right. I get the same thing. Wow. Thanks for saying it. Why don't you say it? And, and everyone is just terrified. And uh, it's, it really is truly crazy because fear has always been the control mechanism of man. The worst things that have ever happened in any society or any civilization since the dawn of fucking records has been done under the name of fear. Get the population afraid. What did Goebbels say? The propaganda minister of the Third Reich. Once people are afraid, give them a common enemy. They'll do anything you want. That's the, the, the Nazis knew this. Everyone knows this, right? So it's a basic playbook. But I think it's also a larger issue. I think that things like keeping sure, making sure people are semi-depressed, making sure people are divided, making sure people are selfish, making sure people are self-obsessed, they're trying to destroy people's will to stand up and, and care about anyone other than themselves. And once you do that, Coupling with the fact that if you start to care about others and genuinely care about the world, you'll ruin your own life. Mm -hmm. It just makes people shut up. Yeah. And it, it's so interesting you say that because something that is not often discussed or analyzed, one of the strangest things I've seen in the conversation around you and your meteoric rise in fame and popularity this year is not a lot of people are thinking, okay, well, for that to happen he's got to be saying some real stuff, right? Like people are, you don't grow by hundreds of thousands of followers per day. Like I was, I've been, obviously I've been following you for years, but I think at the beginning of the year, did you have a, maybe half a million Instagram yeah. followers? Yeah. And by the time they took you off, you had about what? 5.7, 5.8 million. Yeah. This is in the space of a few months. So even when I was talking to people who, you know, say, say they don't like you or they're like, I'm like, look, even if you don't like the message, you don't agree with it, rather than just, why don't you think about, okay, what is it? What's happening in the world? And what is it that this man is saying that this is resonating with so many people to such a strong degree? And it seems like people wanted to just skip over that and go, ah, oh, but he, he... These people can't think. 
These people cannot think. Yeah. It's it's almost a sad realization when you wake up and understand that there's a large contingent of the world who cannot think. And when I say that, I don't mean that in some kind of, you know, semi-sarcastic -sarc or I mean that literally. Mm. There are people who have a strong emotional re reaction to subjects they completely don't understand. There are people out there who will stand up and say, I hate Andrew Tate. Why? I hate him. He needs to go to jail. Yeah. Like, okay, why? I hate him. Why? They don't know why. Mm -hmm. They once you once the matrix can program an emotional response into you and you can't even logically with your own words explain why you have that emotional emotional response, you're completely a slave mind. These people don't think about anything. They believe what they're told to believe. They're emotional about what they're told to be emotional about in the exact direction they're told to be. And that's what the matrix wants. It wants to be able to say a name and tell the world to hate them without even giving a reason. And just get what they want. These people are so far gone. These individuals who do not be, they cannot logically explain their own emotions are so far gone. It's ridiculous. As, as an adult, what you need to do is, is seriously analyze every strongly held belief you currently have and work out where it came from. Is it personal experience? Is it from somebody who I care about and who I trust? Is it from what the news has said? Why do I believe this so much? Why do I have an emotional response to this? Where did it come from? People don't do that. They just sit there, watch the news, watch social media. I'm supposed to hate this guy, so I now hate this guy. So I know exactly what you're talking about, Zuby, because you're right. These people cannot think. They cannot even give a reason. There's a guy on TikTok who walks around and says, have you heard of Andrew Tate around college campuses? And people go, yeah. And he goes, do you like him? And they go, no. Why? He's a misogynist. What's misogynist mean? And then they can't answer. They don't know what it, they don't even know what it means. Like it's 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 almost sad. But then you live through the last three years and you realize that yeah, people can't think. There's a large contingent of the world that truly cannot think. It's scary. Yeah, it is kind of scary. I mean, it's it's so interesting because as someone as someone who knows you, and <laughs> privately and publicly, I've I've defended you a lot a lot this year because people have been saying super wild stuff, and yeah. you know people don't. I posted actually when. When were, when were we in Romania? 2020. Yeah. I posted, um, I was, it was while they were in the process of taking away your accounts. I posted a photo. Of the, I, I, I was just reading the comments and I was like, wow, people have such strong emotion. You know, why, why are you like, people will be mad that we're sitting here right now. You, you, you can't talk to this person. You shouldn't talk to that person and so on. And the thing that blows my mind about it is number one, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. Yeah. Like I, I'm a good judge of character in general. And also I think that your overall message to me is very clearly positive. That's the thing about it. It's, to me, it's like, look, some, someone might not like this bit or that bit or disagree with that statement, that statement. But I'm like, look, overall, what this, you know, it, it's, it's not that dissimilar to me to what they tried to do with Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Like you, you have, I'd say your mess, the overall message, perhaps even of all three of us is, somewhat similar there's a certain through line about personal responsibility yeah. uh building yourself up especially as a man uh not falling into this victim game improving your mindset improving your body all of these things but people will just ignore all of that they'll just ignore all the positive they'll ignore the fact that you're helping people motivating people helping people you, you get emails. I've had emails. Oh, man, you know, I was feeling suicidal. I was feeling this. I was feeling that. And just listening to you helped me. It motivated me, got me in the gym and so on. And people will just gloss over all of that. Absolutely. And they make it out as if, like, all you talk about is women yeah. or something. <laughs> like, no. Right. And, yeah, and that's what's crazy. But the reason they'll gloss over all of that is because, like, well, like I said, you have to ignore your own eyes. That's yeah. what they want. When you're fully slave-minded, what I can – I will genuinely state this as a fact. I will state this as a fact, even though I don't know it's a fact, but I would love for someone to do the study. Go out there in the world and ask 100 people if you like Andrew Tate or not. And the ones who say yes and the ones who say no, do an IQ test. And I, I guarantee you the biggest idiots out there, when I see people who dislike me and I see them trying to explain why, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. It's, like, it's English, but it doesn't make logical sense. And yeah, they'll come at me with the, with the, the garbage about being a misogynist, etc., very, not very often do people argue my points mm -hmm. because arguing my points is absolute destruction because they know they're wrong. So what they try and do is discredit my character. They say, he's a bad person. He's a misogynist. He's done this. He's done that. He's evil. But what does he say that you disagree with? What does he say that's wrong? Oh, but he's a bad person. They can't argue against my points. Mm -hmm. And the only reason they try and say I'm a bad person is because they're weaponizing virtue to try and find a way to attack me. They can't attack me logically because they know I'm right. 
They can't attack my successes as a man or as a person. They can't say I'm not successful. They can't find anything bad to say about me besides bald, which they probably come at you with. <laughs> but uh, they say, where's your hair? Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. I shaved it off. Yeah. Um, but, which is ridiculous in and of itself. But uh, then they say, okay, well, then he's a bad person. And, and the thing about it is once they understand that the only way they can attack you is by saying you're a bad person. It doesn't matter once you that you prove them wrong. They're not interested in the truth. They're not interested in truth. You can sit and say, here's proof he's not a misogynist. Here's proof he's no criminal record, never done anything wrong. Here's proof he's a nice person. Here's proof he gives to charity. Here's the orphanage he built. Here's the dogs he rescued. Here's the millions he's given away. Here. They don't want to see it. They're just blind to it. They're like, no, I ignore my own eyes. That can't possibly be true because the media told me this guy must be bad. And they're slave-minded. And what's actually scary is that these people genuinely believe that they're the good people of Earth. And it's always completely the opposite. Those who can be programmed by the, me by the media machine and the Matrix to just be slave-minded and not think for themselves are the exact ones who always commit the most atrocities. Mm -hmm. These are the, always the people who end up doing the most heinous shit. And when you ask them why, they're like, oh, well, you know, at the time, I just, you know, just put on the gas chamber newspaper told me mm -hmm. to. Oops. That's who these people are. Yes. So whenever I see a slave-minded person, it's not just a matter of going, oh, well, you're a dummy. I look at them with genuine disdain. I look at you and think you're actually a bad person. You're genuinely evil. You cannot think for yourself. I don't even see you as a person I ever want to get to know. or de I'd love to deprogram you, but it's impossible. These people are genuinely the worst people on the planet. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of convenient that all the people who dislike me are the worst people on the planet. So it's fine. I don't have to talk to them anyway. But if you look, read any history book, read any of it, all the most heinous shit committed by humanity were people who just couldn't think for them fucking selves every single time. Awful. The, the worst things that have happened and that happen, I don't believe happen because most people are malicious or evil. I think it's that they are cowardly. I think a lot of it is cowardice. I think most people would rather be in the majority than be right. And once people have made up a decision or been told what to think, doesn't matter what the issue is, to get them out of it or to admit that they're coming out of it is extraordinarily difficult. We, we're still dealing with this after the past two and a half years we've lived through with the whole C-19 response and the fact that people are trying to memory whole things and act like they never said things and never did things they want to just okay like we're just totally back to normal as if you know a year ago you didn't want to throw people into a gulag or whatever sorry to interrupt but you're so right but this is the thing that aggravates me the most these slave-minded individuals are so they're literally barely sentient individuals if i was the kind of person if i was walking around with a mask on and screaming at my fellow man in supermarkets mm -hmm. and i've now realized that i was wrong because COVID is still here yes. and i'm not wearing a mask anymore neither is anyone else i would feel deep shame i would be apologetic i would literally be saying to the world i can't believe they fooled me like that i don't know who you were who i was yelling at in the supermarket you were smarter than me i made a mistake I'm sorry. They fooled me. They tricked me. These people don't even feel shame. They don't even feel sorry. They don't even sit and go, wow, they made a fool out of me. It doesn't even cross their minds. They're on to the next thing now. Slava Ukraine. Next thing. They don't give a shit. And it's just truly amazing that they can destroy someone's life for three years and then recruit these people to go out there and push the agenda for them. And all the people who were tools of an agenda now the agenda is over, are not sentient enough to sit and go, wow, they fooled me. I need to think more carefully next time they try and fool me. No, they just continue with the programming. These people are completely and utterly slave-minded, genuinely slaves. They live inside of a system and the system they're going to purport and fight to defend is going to destroy them. They're not fighting for a system which is going to give them anything other than absolute slavery and tyranny. It's truly incredible to watch in real time this kind of crap happening. But these people are beyond saving. And obviously people like you and I stand up. But even though we're trying to help them, once they come for us with the cancellation mob, these people cheer. It's, 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 it's to a degree you'd like to think it's demoralizing. You'd say, well, why am I trying to save people from themselves if they're truly this stupid? But the odd ones that you can speak to and the minds you can free kind of make it worth it. But 
Yeah, there are so many people out there that literally have never analyzed their own life and decisions. I, I say this to everybody at home. When I still had Twitter, I used to do tweets all the time talking about all the influencers, including conservative right-wing influencers who were purporting and pushing the mask agenda. Yes. You need to fucking apologize. You can't just memory hole it. You can't just delete the tweet. I saw it, yeah. and the world saw it, and you know who you are. Say sorry. Say sorry. Say, I was, I was a fool. They made a fool of me. And admit it, because if you don't admit your mistakes, you're going to repeat them. And there's people out there just, oh, yeah, oops, yeah, it's only a mask, no big deal. The losers, fucking Dude, losers. I, I want to talk about that. Let's let's talk about the mask. Yeah. Because I think you see the mask the way I do. Because that, it's just a piece of cloth thing. Yeah. I'm like, how are people not seeing what this represents and that this is a step on a ladder, right? I, to me, it was very clear. Once they started with those mandates and it was just, oh, it's just... It's just a piece of cloth. And, and then people try to invert it. And they're like, oh, you're scared? You're scared of a piece of cloth? Oh, you're scared of any... It's like, no, I'm not I'm not the afraid one. But to me, firstly, the fact that it's literally a muzzle, yeah. right? So you're, you're literally going outside with, <laughs> yeah. with, with, with your face covered. Also, I was just like, look, this is a compliance letter. If people had said no to the mask mandate, mask mandates wouldn't have even been on the table. Agreed. It wouldn't have been a consideration. I was like, look, you're on one step. It's going to keep going and going. And next thing you know, oh, you've got your, 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 yeah. your Vax pass and so on. And then, you know, that, you know there's the, the real effects. Like we're social beings. Seeing, being able to see people's faces is important. Communication is important. If you've got young children and they're going to learn how to speak and so on for their development, it's important. And people are like, oh, where are your studies? I'm like, bro, if you need a study for me to tell you that it's important to be able to see people's faces and their mouths moving when they're talking to you, if you can't see that there's going to be a detrimental effect or that there's not going to be some detrimental effect of just locking people in their houses yeah. for weeks and months on end, like, I, I, yeah, you're right. I can't pull out a study, but I know that if you go to prison and they want to extra punish you, yeah. they put you in solitary confinement. Yeah. So uh, t tell me, what are your thoughts on that? No, man, you nailed it. It was a compliance exercise. You're completely right when it comes to vax mandates. The only reason all this crap ended is because people finally started to wake up if they would have woken up sooner it never would have happened in the first place which is why when i saw people at the beginning of this garbage purporting and pushing the idea i was so infuriated by it because it was so obvious to me and i'm talking about big big figures on twitter right-wing conservative twitters i couldn't fucking believe how easily they all cupped out and cowardice and were saying yeah wear a mask it's just a mask it's just a mask no it's not just a mask i'm i'm a sentient being and i'm a an individual and I get to decide what I want to do with my body. And if everyone else is wearing a mask, then they're already safe. So why do I fucking need one? I don't want to wear one. Who are they to tell me and force me to wear something on my face? Next, they're going to force me to put something in my bloodstream, which they attempted to do, and they failed. They did it to millions and millions of people. There was a guy on Twitter. I don't know if he's even still around because he had a little bit of controversy, which we don't need to go into for the sake of morality. I mean, he was pro-mask. And I remember arguing with him back when I had an account. I was like, bro, what the... What's wrong with you? Like, it's not just a mask. And then he ended up doing another tweet about how he convinced his, how his kids needed, had to take the vaccine so they could play baseball or some crap. Then he went down the rabbit hole of complete degeneracy and his fall off is pretty interesting. But it's just crazy. I, I couldn't even from the very beginning understand how people didn't see exactly what it was. It was a compliance exercise. And the people in charge of the world sat around laughing. And I really do believe th believe it was laughing. People sit and say, oh yeah, C-19 was just for money. It's just about profit. And I think that's an optimistic way to look at it. Yes, profits were made. Yes, I agree. It was just about money and money was involved. However, a lot of the people behind this stuff print money. Yes. They don't care about money because they print it. They make it up. They type it into computer screens. So they're not interested in making profit because they can make profit anytime they want by affecting global markets, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about that. What it's about is control and power and ego. And a lot of the people in the world who were complying with this crap, who have never had any power or don't understand how the world works, don't understand that it is inside of human nature to constantly get an endorphin rush from being becoming more and more powerful. This is why rich men want to become more and more rich. It's why people with fast cars want to drive faster and faster. It's why playboys want more and more girls. Mm -hmm. It's why that's just human nature. And once you've been powerful for X amount of time and your family's been powerful for as long as you can remember, and you're a billionaire or a trillionaire or whatever you are, mm -hmm. the only thing that's going to make you happy and smile is to feel more powerful. So how do you do that? You tell people, put on a mask when you walk in the restaurant, take it off when you eat, put it on when you stand up, take it off when you sit down. Yep. This has nothing to do with medical science. <laughs> this is just pure compliance. This is just ha ha ha. Watch them do, watch them put it on, put it off, stand up, do the musical chairs. Look at these dummies.
zombies. Yeah. It's funny. And people don't understand that, oh, it can't just be for that. They didn't ruin all those lives just because it's a joke. Yes, they did. Yeah. You didn't go to your parents' funeral because it was funny. You stayed in your house for months for no reason because it was funny. You lost your business because it made someone else laugh. That's all it was. People sat around in charge of the world and said, fuck them. Yeah. Let's have a game. Let's see how long this goes on for. Oh, it's been a week. No riots yet. Let's try again. Nope. A year! No riots yet. Let's up the game. Let's give them an injection. Let's make them all take an injection. Let's text them seven times a day for an injection for something that has 99.9% .9 chance of not killing them anyway. Let's give them something more. Let's mandate it. Let's stop them from flying. Wait, wait, no wait, wait. riots yet. New variant. Yeah, no, now there's a new one. Now there's a new one. Watch out. Like, And people are just sitting there going, oh, okay. Like, it's it's truly, truly incredible. Yeah. Like members of my family, some of them are, some of them got the vaccine, whatever, whatever. I was like, look, you had a serious health issue. When you had cancer, you went to the NHS and they said, we'll send you a letter in four weeks. And you didn't get a letter and you had to call them and chase them and ask when your next appointment was. But they'll text you eight times a day to get this injection. <laughs> Do you think they really care about you living or dying? <laughs> when you have cancer, they don't answer you. Yeah. Like, well, how stupid do you have to be? And people would say to me, yeah, I know it's dumb, but I'll just get it. Yeah. Like, it's you know crazy. what? You know what else it is. I mean, two two points. Number one is the fact that it was just everyday citizens enforcing this on each other. Yeah. To me, was the worst part. I'm like, look, government's going to do what government's going to do. Yeah. All right. I, I lost I lost faith and trust in that 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 a, a while ago. Yeah. But just seeing people, whether I was in the USA or in Mexico, or to be honest, people in the UK were not too bad with this. Portugal, oh my gosh, terrible. Yeah. Like walking down the street outside. Yeah. My first day in Porto, Portugal, I, and I get four people shouting at me yeah. on the street. I'm, I'm just, it's sunny outside, yeah. nice weather. I'm walking down the street, minding my business. People are screaming at me to put on a mask. I'm like, no one has told you to do that. You're not a police officer. Right. You're in no position of authority. You want to go into a restaurant and they want, they want, you won't let me in, into the restaurant. I'm like, is there, if there was a police officer behind yeah. you who's enforcing it, I kind, I kind of get it more, but it was like, People were just doing this on their own they accord. Do and they're not sorry. No. They're not apologizing. They're not looking in the mirror and realizing what a dummy they were. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely zero. Mm -hmm. And it truly make, makes me lose faith in humanity. Because you're right. The government's going to do what the government's going to do. But they can only push as far as to human us amongst each other will tolerate and put up with. And that's why I'm saying slave minds are dangerous. This is why I compare the world to the Matrix. Inside the Matrix, Morpheus says, anyone who's not been unplugged, it's part of that system, and they will fight to defend the system. They need it. These people will fight to defend the system. And it's everywhere you go, it was the same crap. I walked into Prague, and in I was in Prague, and I went into a restaurant, and the guy goes, have you got a Vax Pass? I was like, brother. I was like, brother, you know this is stupid. Why are you doing this? Oh, the, go the police. There's no police here. Just let me sit down and eat. Oh, you know, the police. There's no police here. Stop using police as an excuse for you being a fucking coward. You know this is stupid. Oh, I can't. I can't. So you're a dummy. And, and, and I got to the point where I had to tell him. I was like, there is a reason you're broke and you're a waiter. This is why. Because you can't think outside of a fucking box. You're a dummy. Mm -hmm. And I got to the point where I was literally, COVID was the worst time of my life. I'm a peaceful man. <laughs> I'm a peaceful man. Awful. I'm a peaceful man, bro. This, this is the <laughs> number one time in my life I became a violent individual. It got to the point where I would not let people tell me what to do to that level. After two, three years of it, my patience was down to fucking zero. And I had, and I just developed the, the innate response to just snap. Yeah. I just walk in a gas station with no mask. Oh, mask! And instead of saying no, no, I just literally snapped. Yeah. Carried on walking and they'd be like... <laughs> I just, go, I just yeah. became that guy. Because after three years of trying to reason with people... Yeah. After three years of trying to explain to them how stupid they are, I just ran out of patience. Yeah. And I guess the fact that I'm just a big, scary guy served me well. Because I got to the point I was just telling people to get fucked. Yeah. I went to a gas station, even in Romania, where they weren't that bad. I went to a gas station in Romania. He said, mask. I said, fuck you. I'm not wearing a mask. He said, no mask. I won't serve you. I said, okay. Is the gas free? Because the gas is in the car. Mm -hmm. So is the gas free? No, you must pay. Then serve me. No, I won't serve you. I was like, then fucking I throw the money on the floor. They get fucked. Like, d dummies. Yeah. And, and, and they went out to get the money from the floor, and then he called three of the other attendants. So There's like four on one. They kind of come over to get intimidating. And I stand there and said, listen, I don't know why any of you even care. I don't give a shit. Listen, if you paid me $300 a month to work in a gas station, you could walk into my gas station <laughs> and start a fire. <laughs> you could be in the corner. With a you could be stealing. You could be doing I'll be like, please stop. 
Ah, oh, fuck it. It ain't mine. Like, why do you? I was like, why do you guys? You're about to all get the shit kicked out of you yep. for for a mass. It's not even your gas station. It's crazy. It's it's like you lose your. These people are losing their minds over these mandates and these rules. And there was a couple times where I had these big events, these big like throwdowns, where I could see the other men around with masks on, and I could see they felt shame in their eyes. Yes. I could see they were like. He's the brave one. Why? Because they wouldn't say anything. I could see they were all shameful. And I was like, just take it off. Everyone just take it off. Yeah. What's it? Why can't we all just take it off? <laughs> Why am I? Like, I couldn't understand it. But, bro, it was the worst time in my life. I really got to a point of just genuinely screaming at people. You know what else I did, though? That was great. I, I started I, uh, my, my number one response to women. Because with men, it was just, fuck you, do something about it. But with women, I had to be a little more tactful. So with women, when they say, oh, you need to wear a mask, I'd say, I'm a doctor. Are you a doctor? Are you a doctor? Mm -hmm. No, I'm a doctor. Shut up. And they just shut up. I said all the doctor to people, and they'd be quiet. But the whole thing was just asinine. Yeah. It, was pro it was genuinely some of the worst years of my life. Not because of the mandates, because I ignored all of them. Mm -hmm. I didn't obey a single fucking one. I did whatever I wanted the entire time. Didn't get injected, didn't wear masks, didn't stay home. I broke all the rules. But just dealing with idiots trying to tell me what to do, I, I couldn't tolerate it. After three years, I'm telling you, it's a good thing. Maybe they ended it because of me. Maybe they were <laughs> analyzing me and they thought, he's at the end of his temper. Things are going to go wrong because he's just walking around swearing at people yeah. now. Let, let's have dropped this crap. I couldn't believe it. It was so disheartening. It was really disheartening, and it really made me understand how all the nasty, horrible stuff that happened in the 20th century, I, I'd always had some understanding of how that type of thing is possible, but I was just like, yeah, I get it. Totally. I totally get it, and all you people who think you're all virtuous and heroic and whatever, I know exactly what you would have done had you been in that scenario those few decades back. You've Everyone played their hand, and I think that as depressing as that is <laughs> as, dis is as, dis as disappointing as it is it's like you know yeah. you know every single person on the planet played their hand multiple times yeah. and so you just you just got to see it what blew my mind about that whole experience is i don't know why sweden of all countries didn't do it yeah. that's weird because if you were to say andrew choose a country that won't go down this nonsense yeah. i would have chosen maybe russia or like at, at somewhere that's somewhere not globally, yeah, somewhere based. <laughs> Sweden. <laughs> I was like, they're the biggest pussies of all. Like, just, I how does this make sense? So, like, because at the very, very beginning of it, my brother and I went to Sweden yeah. day one. At the beginning of the pandemic, when they had all the videos and people were falling down and dying in the street and the Italian hospital and all this garbage, the big psyop. When at the beginning, when everyone believed, me and Tristan sat there and said, "Listen, if this can kill me and you, military age males in perfect health, then the world's over." Like civilization as we now know it is done. So there's no point hiding. Let's just go die. So that was our basic logical conversation. We flew to Sweden because Sweden was wide open. And after two months of partying every night in Swedish nightclubs, we were like, this is some kind of style. Because obviously we're fine. Yeah. Obviously the Swedes are fine. Their death rates are lower than everyone who's locked in their house. The English are clapping like performing seals for the NHS. Like it's just like talk about a style. People have forgotten how much goofy stuff happened. People have forgotten. <laughs> Like, if you go back to early 2020 and you go, the, that's the thing that kept blowing my mind. If it was like one or two things didn't make sense or didn't add up, it's like, okay, fair enough. But I was like, guys, top to bottom, this, doesn't make sense. Not, this is not making sense. Yeah. And then you remember summer 2020 and, you know, tens of thousands of people out protesting. Yeah. Even the, the health officials declared that, well, racism is a bigger pandemic yeah. than the virus. And, that doesn't, and yeah, these protests don't spread the virus. These protests <laughs> do spread really the virus. <laughs> this country's open and it's fine. This one's closed and there's a pandemic. Like, it, you're, you're right, bro. Like, but, 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 but you're right. It destroys your faith in humanity. And what's scary is the next thing they come along with. You know, I mean, a lot of people died from the results of the lockdown of, of C-19. Yes. There was a lot of genuine destruction to the world. I, I would argue that the mandates and solution to the disease was much worse than, worse than the disease itself. Agreed. Especially if you're going to include. But the next thing they come along with, people are going to slave mine their way into it. It's even happening right now. I don't talk about this subject a lot because I don't want to get assassinated and I'm, I'm getting there. But... <laughs> The whole COVID, the whole uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, the idea that Putin's lost his mind, that he's an imperialist and he's invading for no reason, and Ukraine never did anything wrong, and NATO never did anything wrong, and we never aggravated Russia, and we never poked them at all, we never pissed them off. 
And the fact now that we have large segments of the population, which are once again, like COVID-19, doing things and making decisions and taking action, which are against their own interests and the idea of the PSYOP behind it. People who obeyed the COVID rules, it wasn't for your own interest. You were psyoped into believing it was. And now we have large contingents of the U of the European population who believe it's in their own interest to have heating bills go up 8x and inflation go up 20% a year mm -hmm. to send money and guns to Ukraine for a proxy war. <laughs> like, why? Why would you want that to happen? If, if the media wasn't psyoping you, why would you want inflation to get out of control, your household bills to get out of control, to fund a proxy war with, with, between NATO and, the, and Russia? What does that even give a shit? Anyone with a brain would say, you know what? No, just leave my electricity alone and let me earn money. Like, like it's completely crazy, but the media machine tells them to, and they'll just sit there and destroy themselves at will. Put a gun to your head and shoot yourself. Do it. It's for your health. Okay. Is okay. It's crazy. The thing is, if it just affected the individuals who are in that mindset, then that would be one thing. Well, but then it'd be Darwinism. It's like, yeah. So that, yeah. So that would be fixed. But it's like, it's not enough for you to go for your jog with your mask on. You want to force me to do it. You want to force you to do it. You want to force... I'm like, bro, if you want... I've I've told off zero people in person. I've screamed at zero people for wearing masks. And I've screamed at zero people for not wearing them. I've attacked zero people for taking the shot. I've attacked zero people for... I'm like, bro, mind your business. That's another thing that just went out the window. I'm like, dude, is nothing private anymore? Since when is it okay to tell people to do this or to ask people's questions about their medical history and this it's just all this weirdo stuff got normalized yeah it, it's, it was truly clown world and i have a thousand different examples of, convers <laughs> of conversations i had but yet it was truly clown world and that's yeah. extrapolating out and it's gonna be it's gonna that, that was a test a test for whether their media machine and their propaganda machine can still work amongst the populace they tested it i think they were pretty pretty happy with how it went it didn't go f as far as they wanted to go I think they had much grander plans. They, at one point, they were really pushing for some really crazy things. But that's the way these things work when it comes to global control, right? You push, you push, you push, you push, you push to get to the point where you realize you can't push anymore. The people won't accept it. You give 98% of it back, mm -hmm. and then you gain 2%. And you continue to do it on and on and on. And something else will come along sooner or later. And I do think that humanity and the world itself is heading for genuine global slavery. I do think that with things like AI and CBDCs and as the world gets more and more technologically advanced and as these people have a greater need for control, as the one bad thing about waking people up is the more people we wake up, the more threatened the, the system feels. Yes. And then they need a response to that. And their response is to shut up the people who, who talk. So it's getting interesting, but I think our children's children will live in a world which is very different from our own, and I don't think it'll be more free. I, I would, I could only argue it would be the opposite. I think it's going to be a lot less free. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult to do anything. All social mobility is going to be destroyed. It's, it's going to be an interesting this planet. Is, man, this is what I always try to tell people, because the most common pushback I get when I talk about this stuff is it's easy for you to say because you're self-employed, yeah. you're not married and don't have kids yet. Yeah you're able to, you're in this position and my counter to that is you should be going even harder on this because you have children think about their future you're already here going zuby how did it get to this stage it all happened so quickly i'm like well where do you think it's going to be in 20 years in 30 years in 50 years if you continue to just allow every single one of these narratives being pushed by one percent of the population to to run riot do you want your daughter competing, not even being able to play sports because right. everyone in women's sports is male, yeah. right? Do you want do you want penises in your daughter's changing room? Yeah. Do you want um, everyone to, you, do you want your kids to be judged based on their skin color, yeah. right? Whether they're white or they're black or whatever. Do you want these weird racial narratives? Do you want CBDCs and the government completely, yes, they already control the money, but yeah. controlling it at a, a minute degree yeah. where they can just switch your money off and you can no longer buy food because you said the wrong. I'm like, do you want your kids to deal with that? It's not going to be you who deals with it, but your children, your grandchildren are going to. And yeah, that's, um, and you're right. And they're still cowards. They're still cowards. It's, yeah. it's truly, it truly is crazy. Going back to our friend. I, that's why I said that to him. I said, bro, you think you are a coward and you think that telling your sons to get the injections so they can play baseball makes you a good dad because baseball is so important. No, teaching your sons to not be cowards is what's important. Mm. You are a coward and now your children are going to be fucking cowards just like you. You're a dummy. And, and, and this is the thing. We suffer from cowardice and you're right. 
People don't even with children as motivation. They just they just find a they find a way to be afraid. But I, I'd argue that I don't even think that's the reason they are cowards. I think if these people didn't have kids in a mortgage, they'd still be pussy. Oh, I agree. I agree. It's yeah, but I'm, I'm saying that that's what people say, yeah. or some people say it's a, it has nothing to do with money either. Because yeah. there's people who are worth a hundred million, worth a billion, and they're cowards. Yeah. Right. There's people who are ultra wealthy celebrity never has to work again. You're set for life. They still will not step slightly yeah. out of line Dude, and then you've got people to do who is are avoid conflict what well, there's a lot of people out there in the world today who think they can avoid this war yes. they understand there's a war going on you have those who are completely ignorant ignorant to it and pretend that there's no war but i don't actually believe that's very many of the population most people understand there's a war going on they're trying to avoid it because they don't want to get caught up in any kind of messy situations but what they do not understand is that the war has come for all of us and your choices are very simple. Either you have your mind right and you understand objective reality and you're resisting against the matrix and their narratives, or you're accepting their garbage so you don't have to resist against them. And now you're arguing with your own mind. The people who are purporting these ideas and the people who are sticking up for the matrix and all of its garbage the hardest are also the people who are talking about depression, talking about anxiety, talking about, watch their, read their Twitter feeds. Anyone who disagrees with objective reality by circumstance or by happenstance seems to have some kind of mental defect or they're unhappy or they're on antidepressants or they have anxiety or they're stressed or they need time off for mental health concerns or all this crap. Your mind and your body and your soul created by God have a degree of innate understanding of what's right and what's wrong. And if you go against that, you're going to feel a, of, you're going to feel guilt and you're going to feel shame and you're going to feel uneasy and you're not going to feel normal. If you're going to go through life and accept all the garbage they tell you to put inside of your brain, I don't believe you can be happy that way. I don't believe you can be a happy individual walking around, pretending that blue is green, pretending that green is red, like staying in your house, being fearful, being afraid, hating your fellow man, uh, believing in these narratives that there's no way you can ever get ahead because you're systematically oppressed and held down by some whatever. And if you absorb all this crap, you're going to be an unhappy person. Yes. So I think that either your mind is right and you're happy and you're resisting against the matrix or... You're an unhappy person who's absorbed the matrix programming and you're resisting against yourself. We're all going to fight. You're either fighting the system or you're fighting your own brain. You need to make a choice. Now, I personally would rather fight the system than, than sit inside of a self-destructive cycle looking at myself in the mirror. Ah, uh, yes, I need my eighth injection. Yes, I'm, I'm so sad. Like I, I, That sounds worse to me than being canceled. So you can cancel me. But this battle's here for everyone. And I think if the world understood that and if people understood that, a lot more of them would stand up. Mm -hmm. But they think they can avoid it, and they can't. I think what a lot of people don't understand is how all these things are connected. You said something interesting there very quickly. You talked about the mental health, yeah. physical health and well-being, and spiritual health. Yeah. And we live in this weird time where people talk about these things as if they're completely siloed off from each other. It's actually one of them. There's a lot of annoying things about the mental health conversation. But one of them to me is they talk about mental health and physical health as if they're completely separate yeah like if i'm there telling people you know if you go to the gym and you exercise regularly and you eat well your mental health will improve and they're looking at me like i just said that the the earth is flat and yeah. space is fake and i'm like you don't you don't see that connection well it's well it's it's they pretend not to see it because they don't want to try mm -hmm. this is the thing if you tell people the solution to something and they don't like the solution then they'll pretend you're wrong right you you i'm depressed that's why i'm fat no no, that's, that's not, that's, you're not fat because you're depressed. You're depressed because you're fat. So how about this? Go to the gym and train. Oh, that's hard. Well, then, then stay depressed. Like, what do you want? What answer do you want? No, I want a way to be as fat and unhealthy as possible while also having a perfectly capable mind and feeling fantastic. Well, then you get down the route of just drugging yourself, right? The, the mind is a very sophisticated chemical factory and your body produces the chemicals. What's the complication here? Like, why is it hard to work out that if your body is efficient and doing what it's supposed to do and strong and is optimal, then your mind is probably going to follow. What's there complicated to understand that habits, which are beneficial to you, are going to allow you to build a more discipline, to be a more motivated individual, and also change your objective reality? People also want to disconnect not only mental health from physical health, but they also try and disconnect mental health from objective reality. Mm -hmm. I have it all the time. They go, oh, he's depressed. It's not his fault. I say, listen, he's a loser and his life is shit. 
If I was him, I'd be depressed. So let's not pretend that his mental health is completely separate to the objective reality of the fact that he is a lonely dork. Of course he's depressed. Who wouldn't be? Yes. If you, if he got up and tried his best and was disciplined and was motivated and he was important and actually became somebody, guess what? He'd start to feel better. So you're completely right. They have separated from physical health. They separate it from spiritual health because also if you know you're doing bad things inside of your heart, you're going to feel guilt, which is why all the people who've absorbed the matrix programming end up being so unhappy. But also the, the, the biggest disconnect for me is mental health and physical reality. I've said to depressed people before, I'm depressed, I have a disease. Okay, you have a disease. Describe your life to me. And they describe their life and say, you don't have a disease, you have a shit life. Th th that's it. You have a shit life. Mm -hmm. So you don't got disease, you're just a fucking loser. Fix your life, you'll feel better. No, it's not that simple. It is that simple, my friend, because I'll tell you something. I'm the happiest man on the planet, but if I was you, I'd be depressed because you're a fucking loser. So that's it. That's, it's, it's, that's it. You're a fucking loser. <laughs> you're a fucking loser. But but I say this stuff, and the reason I say it so brutally is because I don't believe the people who are losers didn't decide to be losers. Mm -hmm. If you're a loser, you chose to be. For the same reason if you're fat, you chose to be fat. I don't fucking buy any bullshit that someone is force-feeding you. You decided to be. I think the universe is a very giving place. I think that God is very giving. I think that in reality, objective reality, if you truly try your best, you'll get it. I've yet to meet somebody, maybe you can correct me, who eats right, goes to the gym every day, and trains as hard as they could, who is not in fantastic shape. I've never seen it. It's like, so the only people who aren't in fantastic shape are the people who decided not to do those things. So they decided. So I don't feel sorry for them. I'm done having pity with people. I'm done fucking sitting there going, oh, doop de doo No, you decided to be a fucking loser. So your life's shit. So you're depressed. Good. That's your, that's that's what you decided to pull from the universe. I decided to pull the absolute opposite. Mm -hmm. And this is where, see, this is where your message and communication style is very polarizing. Because there's a type of person who hears that and is like, this Tate guy is the biggest a-hole in the world. Completely. He is toxic. Yeah. He is saying horrible things. Yeah. There's another type of person who, regardless of the position they're in, is like, that's freaking motivating. That's empowering. Because the thing that's important is this is a temporary thing. This is a thing people have control over, Absolutely. right? You're not talking about something that people have no yeah. control over, right? If you've just something, you, you've got some particular issue, you, you've got some type of disability or something, you know, you're, you've got a certain type of illness, which just came out. And yeah. that's a, that's a whole different situation. Absolutely. You're talking about a temporary situation, which you within yourself have the power to control you only eat for yourself yeah. you can only train for yourself you can only really work for yourself and so on you can you can inspire and motivate other people but you have to do it yourself like i i can give you the tools and give you some knowledge but i can't work out i can't go to the gym for you bro i can't lift the weights for you i'm not i can't go for a run for you i can't eat for you right. the food i eat does not affect your body yeah. so that's all on you and depending on where someone is that either is extremely empowering and motivating and makes them go, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You know what? Like, I don't want to be a loser. I don't want to be in this position. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be fat. Let me put in some work. Yeah. And someone else is the reason that it triggers them is, and here's something else I've noticed. And this plays into a lot of other narratives out there. This plays into the, some of the feminist narratives and some of the racial narratives and some of the other things is I've noticed that people, a lot of people like to have what I call a permanent alibi. Yeah. Oh, completely. A permanent alibi, a permanent excuse, some type of system or person. It could be white supremacy. It could be the patriarchy. Yeah. It could be systemic oppression. It could be, um, you know, the, the corporate, corporate greed. There's something out there that's not you yeah. that is the ultimate source of all your problems. And that's why these people never focus on themselves. And they hate the concept of personal responsibility. So they're always screaming at everyone else and trying to so-called change the system, dismantle, disrupt everything. Yeah. Even though in many cases, the particular system they're referring to actually is functioning fine. Yeah. But rather than just going, ha, ah, you know what? Actually, maybe it's not, maybe I'm not fat because of the corporations or because of white. Maybe I should stop suing yeah. McDonald's because I'm eating it. Have you seen the people trying to like say that they're obese because of white supremacy and uh, stuff like yeah, that? Bro. And you're just like, bro. But this is the stop. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> self-accountability is truly terrifying to a loser who, who knows they'll always be a loser, mm. right? If you Once you realize that you don't have the mental fortitude to get up and change yourself, then the last thing you want is self-accountability. 
that's the lot that's very scary to you and that's why they fight very hard to push against it and pretend it's not true what's funny about these people who are always trying to change the world and change the way things work and the systems and the oppression and the fucking gender pay gap and whatever all the other crap they come up with what they fail to understand is that it doesn't matter what system you implement it doesn't matter if it's democracy or communism it doesn't matter if it's a monarchy it doesn't matter what it is the world is competitive and there's going to be people who do better than you and sooner or later, regardless of how you organize or structure a system, the people who work harder or are smarter or more inventive or do better are going to end up with a better scenario or a better situation. If you try and construct a society where that's literally impossible, then society fails. Yes. So even inside of communism, the people who ended up higher members of the party or the people who ended up owning the factory or the people who ended up finding a little black market thing on the side or the people who lived a better life in communism were the hustlers, mm -hmm. were the ambitious people, were the hardworking people. They're the ones who managed to find a way to get blue jeans in or a Michael Jackson CD or whatever it was and make some money. So it doesn't matter what system you construct. If you are a lazy loser, you're going to still be at the bottom of the totem pole. Because there's going to be people like me. I'm, I'm, I'm destroying you in capitalism. And I will promise you, as God is my witness, I would destroy you under communism just the exact fucking same. Because I am smarter <laughs> than you. And I work harder than you. And that's who I am as a man. I will always beat you. So it doesn't matter what system you try and put together. The, the, the winners are going to win. And the losers are going to lose. So a lot of these people who are so obsessed with trying to change the system as if it's going to give them a fighting chance, no. Because the world is competitive. It's player versus player. A lot of people don't understand that. Every single thing of value that you want, the reason it has value and the reason you want it is because other people want it. That hot girl you want, other men want. That's why you want her to get her to show it's valuable. If, if, she, if no one else wanted her, she wouldn't be considered hot and then you wouldn't want her at all. That's the exact point of it. So you're always competing against other people. Every dollar you want, somebody else wants. Every car you want, somebody else wants. It's completely and utterly competitive. And it doesn't matter what structure you put on top of society. That's, that's base human nature. Mm. And if you're going to be a loser and you're not going to take self-accountability and you're not going to wake up and realize that absolutely everything in your life is your own fault and you can affect it, then you are going to lose. And, and I'm done. Zuby, I'm done feeling sorry for these people. I, I don't feel sorry for them. Don't feel not an ounce of pity anymore. <laughs> don't give a shit because they decided to be losers. That's, my, that's what I've learned. Another thing I find interesting with when people have this mindset is that they, this things that they claim to not care about, they then rank themselves or they have the same sort of, you can tell people's value structure oftentimes by the things that they're envious of or jealous of, the things they spend their time on and so on. So like how much money you earn, cool, I'm like, God bless you. Like people make as much money as you want. I'm not sitting here feeling like, oh, you know, Tate makes this much yeah. and I make this much. Yeah. So I need to tear him down and change the, yeah. I'm like, to me, genuinely money is not, money is important, yeah. but there are several things to me that are more important than money. So I don't need to go past a certain level. And if I did, honestly, I'd just start giving it all, giving Completely. it away. Completely. But it's interesting because you'll get people who are like, you know, money doesn't matter. I'm not materialistic, this and that. But then you're obsessed with how much everyone else is earning. Yeah. You see a guy with a nice car and you're angry at him. I'm like, wait, I thought you said you don't care that much about, you're not material. If you're not materialistic, a dude having a Lambo or a Bentley should not bother you in the slightest. You should be like, nice one, bro. Like, I got my life here. Yeah. I got my wife. I got my kids. I'm living my life. I'm in good shape. Like, I'm cool. I'm not the richest man in the world, yeah. but I'm cool. I'm great at these other things and I'm happy. Yeah. But it's weird because... I find it so weird when people do this pocket watching thing and they're always trying to stoke this resentment of like, oh, this person's earning that much. I'm like, I genuinely don't care how much money anyone is earning, yeah. right? If poverty is a problem, income inequality, like, okay. I mean, I guess if it gets to a super extreme level, then it can cause some uh, destability, but it's just, it's resentment, it's jealousy, it's envy. And I think it's weird to say you don't care about something. Yeah. And then you see someone else who has it or is doing well in that level. And you want to make these nasty comments at them. That's very weird to me. Yeah, they, they hate themselves and they hate the world and they're nasty, bitter people. And then they try and hide behind virtue to attack others. They try and pretend that that person having a car is not jealousy on their part. It's because they care so much about the starving kids who that money could go to some kid. How many times have you seen that shit on Twitter? Yeah, oh, you bought that car, but you could have donated to charity. How much do you know donate to charity? <laughs> When's the last time you did anything good for anyone besides yeah. sit around throwing around fake virtue that you've weaponized to be hateful? That's all they are. They're hateful people. They're you know sad the one, people. Do you know the one where I re, where this was a few years ago? But I remember Jeff Bezos donated. I want to say a hundred million yeah. dollars. And everyone, to, yeah, everyone got mad. It wasn't enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember going through and reading these comments, and I was just like, bro, they're like, oh, 
well, this is only X percent, right? They go and find, look up his net worth and then they do the calculation and they're like, that's only, you know, zero point X percent of it. I'm like, bro, it's a hundred million dollars to homeless people. Yeah. How much you, I'm like, I'm sure you, you guys are walking past homeless people all day. You're not, you're not giving them any money. You're not even speaking to them. You're stepping over them and so on. This guy's donated a hundred million. Who cares if he has billions more? Yeah. That's a hundred. I was just like, you know what? These people are, you, you know, but you know, it's yeah. bro, you can't satisfy these people. No. And you're right. They'll step over a homeless person all day long and they won't give 1% of their net worth no. away. What's actually scary though. Once you kind of get to a certain level of wealth, you get these charity things all the time. People come to me and say, why don't you give to charity? Why don't you give to charity? And I don't, I don't advertise my charitable donations because I don't think, I don't want to buy virtue because that's what I think it is. If you give a bunch of money away and then you tell everyone about it, you're just buying you're just buy I feel like you're you're paying to be liked as opposed to giving to charity. So I don't really mention it. But what I have tried start noticing is it's hard to give to charity because most charities are a fucking scam. Mm -hmm. So like I, if I just like I built an orphanage in Romania and I have my own charity that rescues street dogs and then I do a lot of charity personally. Like if I know somebody and they have a problem, I will I'll give them money. I had a friend whose daughter was sick, I gave them money or I have a friend who needs something, I'll give him money. But if, people go, "Why don't you give money to charity?" It would, it would really bother me to give $5 million to some charity, some organization, and less than 1% of that end up helping anybody. And that's the truth about most charities. So people go, give money to charity. I say, no, most charities are just NGOs and covers and scams. I'm not funding some some chief executive's Lambo. The, the guy you see on the Lambo on the street who you're mad at runs a charity. Like, these people don't even understand how the world works. They don't even understand the world. So it's not even that easy to just give money away like they pretend it is. But uh, these people don't care about humanity. These people are anti-human. These people just care about trying to feel better about themselves. And there's a reason why they say misery loves company. And when you're truly hateful and you hate yourself because you've absorbed the matrix programming, and like I said, you're always going to be unhappy because of that, then the number one way you can feel better, in fact, probably the only way you can feel better besides snapping out of the, snapping out of the dream, is to attack other people and make them feel bad. There, I, I know, I'll say this now, and everyone's going to say it's arrogant, but it's true. The reason the hate storm around me is so fervent and the reason it got so to such fever pitch is not because of the things I say. It's because I am tall and strong and funny and sexy and humble and charismatic and rich <laughs> as fuck. That's why they looked at me and go, he has everything. But now's my chance. It's like trying to get the school bully. Even though, I've, even though I've bullied no one, is trying to get the cool kid in school. He's the cool guy. Look, he has all this money and he's, he's, he's tall and he's got his fun life and he's got his jet and he's, uh, and he's smart. There's, there's nothing I can attack this guy with. He ticks every box. But now we're ganging up on him. The, the rats are ganging up on the tiger. <laughs> we can get a bite in. Now's the chance. If I was any, if I was any less fucking successful or objectively objectively, if, if God hadn't given me so many of, of his favorite attributes, if I didn't have everything every man could dream of, they wouldn't have attacked me like they did. The reason they did is because there's people out there who have none of the things I have. And they just said, and they were just angry. Yeah. They're angry. It's nothing to do with what I say. If anyone actually listens to what I say and doesn't let their ego get in the way, they'll understand that it's a massively positive message. You're right. The way I word things can offend some, mm -hmm. but those people who are too offended to take positive from it are a lost cause anyway. Yeah. Good. We well, are a lost cause. Goodbye. Yeah. But the people, most people who listen to my stuff can understand it. But yeah, that's what it truly happens. These people are just hateful people. They're full of hate. They're the least tolerant, most hateful people <laughs> on the planet. Yeah. What I like to say with people, even people who take an issue with you or some other people, is I say, look, you can eat the meat and spit out the bones. Yeah. Right? So if it's you're like, you know what, that 30, that 20%, that 10%, I don't like, I don't agree, I find that part objectionable. I'm like, you can still gain value from the part you like. There's 8 billion people on this planet. No two of us agree on absolutely everything. But if you see someone having success in any dimension, yep. you can 100% learn from that person. Agreed. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's physical, if it's knowledge, if it's finances, whatever. You don't need to like them. Yep. You don't need to think that they're you, – you, you, you can learn from people you don't even like. And, it, and perhaps in the process, you might find that, oh, actually, I, I – do kind of like this guy and yeah. you know that he's not as bad as what i thought he was or whatever and i think something that's um that I've, I've noticed in this time and i'd like to get your perspective on this it's something i've been thinking about is we seem to be living in a time where people are harsher the court of public opinion is harsher and more judgmental of words and tone 
than of actions. Yeah, I agree. Because we're living in a world which has just become soft and it's all about feelings, right? Mm. It's, it's absolutely not really crazy because this is what happens when you have a society that's devoid and detracted from reality. The fact that I was considered the number one threat to society for some reason, and I had to be punished for that. Not the pedophiles, not the rapists, not the murderers, no. not the kidnappers. No. no. Me. Not the drugs cartels. No. The man who says that women can't park cars. <laughs> he is the number one public enemy. Right, and it's because we've lived in a world where people are detached from reality. Mm -hmm. If you live in a, if you're, if you're realistic, then you're not going to give a shit about having someone with a different opinion to you. There's a reason why when I go to countries which are not as economically successful as the West, nobody has a problem with me. They're like, yeah, I like what you say. I disagree with some things, but you know, I also, I have, to, I need to feed my family. So cool. They don't have time to be <laughs> offended like these people do. Yeah. These people are absolutely massively coddled. They're spoiled. And they think that by just attacking people like me, that somehow they're going to feel better about themselves. What they don't understand, the great irony of it is, is the reason we all know the age old saying, strong men create good times, good times create weak men, blah, blah. But it's true. The people they are, these people out there who are living such a spoiled, coddled existence that they have the time to research everything I've ever said, find the 15 seconds out of the four years of podcasts I've done that really, truly offend them, then cut it up. Then make a Twitter account dedicated to spreading that as far as possible. The only reason they can live in a society so soft or they even have time to do that garbage is because of men like me. So they're attacking the creators of their own fucking cradle. It's, it's truly crazy because it's men like me of drive and determination and purpose who stood up and didn't upset the slave programming of the time that built countries like America and the UK, mm -hmm. that built these countries. So they're attacking me, not understanding they're destroying, they're biting the hand that feeds them. Because when men like me give up on you and we all disappear and you're left with only people like yourselves, you just eat yourselves to fall apart and you get destroyed. So it's kind of like full circle. God has a plan. All the people who hate me are going to end up paying for it because <laughs> they need me. They need men like me. And, and I know this. I say this to feminists all the time. My biggest argument against feminism, and, and I get a lot of them, I say, listen, I have no problem with women being equal under the law. In fact, you already are. I'd argue you have benefits under the law. If you look at divorce law sure. and, or, or uh, custody law, I can't think of a single law where a man has an advantage over a woman. Not one. I can think of one. What is it? Men can be bare chested in public. I stand corrected. It's literally the only one. <laughs> I stand corrected. I stand correct. I stand corrected. I think we can fix that one for the ladies <laughs> if they want to have a go at it. But in, in general, I think we're already equal under the law. I, I don't believe in the gender pay gap. That's been debunked a billion times. But I sit there and I say to these feminists who say that we don't need men for anything. I had, I've had, a one, I had an argument with a feminist. She goes, why do we even need men? I said, listen, my dear, my dear, which she hated. My dear, you need men to defend feminism. Because we're sitting here and arguing and we're differing on opinions and there's four of you women and there's here by myself and we're, dif we're differing. But if this argument were to become heated and fever pitch and let's say you were to attack me with an ashtray, right? And I were to defend myself. The only chance you four would stand is calling a man, a police officer to come and protect you. You need men to stand up for your ideals. You want a feministic society, but if another country comes to destroy you, you need men to go fight in that army. If there's going to be crime in your feministic society, you need men to turn up and deal with it. You're, the only reason feminism survives is because men will allow you to have your idea and defend your idea for you. When the Taliban took back Afghanistan, the reason that the local people that the USA had trained, the USA trained the uh, Afghani Defense Force, the reason the ADF gave up so quickly is because they looked around at the ideals they were defending and realized this is bullshit. Imagine this. America are there. They're giving you money. You haven't, you're not really even in a war. You're sitting around with a gun. Taliban are just chilling. It's pretty easy, right? America leave. Taliban start mobilizing up. You're standing there next to a girl's school with your AK. You're going to look at the girl's school and go, fuck it. <laughs> and you're going to quit. Why are you going to fight for that, defense, that girl's school? Now, feminism's so real. Why don't the girls fight for their, their, their school? Yeah. Oh, it turns out that when there aren't men prepared to die for feminism... It all goes away. When aren't men prepared to defend the feministic ideal, then feminism's not even a real thing. You need men who are prepared to die for this garbage. So when a feminist goes, what do we need men for? For feminism. Because when, when the women had to defend their own school, guess what happened? It closed down. It's not even a real concept. Men are always going to be the physical bottom line of society. Violence is always going to be the unfortunate underpinning of civilized society, and men are simply more capable of violence. So any idea you hold, any idea you want in your mind, Understand that any idea, any law, and all of these things are underpinned by violence. You're only allowed to have the idea because society has said so. 
if they say you're not allowed it and you continue to have it, sooner or later, they'll become violent against you like they have against me. That's what happens. So when feminists sit there and say we don't need men, they are just so brutally ignorant to the fact that, yes, you do. You wouldn't be able to function or have an opinion differing to a man in society if there weren't men prepared to defend you. So absolute and utter bullshit. This is the thing. The concept of privilege has been bastardized a lot over the last few years, but you truly have to be in an incredibly privileged position to even ask that question as to why is one of the sexes even necessary. But it goes for either one, right? You, you're not, you're living in unicornia yeah. if you can't even think in your brain, and you've been living there for a long time, if you can't even perceive in your brain as to, oh, okay, yeah, maybe I feel this way, but yeah, actually, if I think, yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, men are necessary. Oh, yeah, actually, women are, yeah, we, we, we need both. And that's the thing. And I'll sit here and say, as the number one most hated fucking misogynist on the internet, because they say I'm something I'm not, I always say women are beautiful, women should be protected. You should protect and provide for your woman. We need women. Relationships are beautiful. Families beautiful. I never sit here and say, sorry, <coughs> I never sit here and say that women are not necessary. Whereas the other side are saying the complete opposite, saying that men should be euthanized. And, and, and they're all over social media. Yeah. It's crazy, man. On my last emergency meeting, because I'm on Rumble now, for anyone who's asking where I am, YouTube deleted me. I've moved to Rumble.com. Uh, Rumble.com slash Tate Speech. I did an emergency meeting there, and there was a story about five women who made up a story that they were sexually assaulted at a party by a guy purely because they didn't like him. And they kept the story up the entire summer. Wow. The guy was kicked out of school, was arrested, uh, had to pay a bail before eventually when the pressure got up, all five of them admitted that they literally completely made it up because they didn't like him. He lost his school, lost his job. He was suicidal. He was spent two months in jail, etc. Guess what? All five of them are still on Instagram. Of course. I'm not. What did I say? I literally said, the reason I am now a misogynist is because I literally said that I believe men are better at parking cars than women. Because I, I, the number of times I've been with a woman trying to park a car, she's like, please do it for me. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And I do it for her because I'm a fucking gentleman. That's, that's why I'm misogynistic. It's great. Or saying that I should defend a woman because I'm physically stronger. That's why I'm misogynistic. <laughs> it is insane. Yeah. It is clown world. And the women who stand up and try and argue against me, they're feeble attempts at exceptions trying to disprove the rule or some garbage. Listen, there's nothing wrong with accepting that men and women are different. Yep. We have different skills, different strengths. Women are better at some things than men. Absolutely or not, Lee, I completely believe that. There are some things I will only trust a woman with and I will not trust a man with. Yep. I say this all the time. They ignore all of that. They ignore it and to find the one time I said about parking and they won't <laughs> shut up about it. It's truly, it's truly incredible. And this is all goes down to the slave mind and people not wanting to understand and accept the reality of situations. And it's, it's scary. I think people get way more triggered and offended by things that have uh, either are true and are inconvenient or at least have a kernel of truth to them. If you, if you just straight up lie to people, they don't care. Yeah. If you say something that's true, but it's inconvenient or it's unpleasant or you don't want it to be yeah. or you're the exception to the general rule or you yeah. know the – that's the stuff that really bothers people. I've noticed that. Completely, yeah. If I was walking around just lying, yeah. I, I wouldn't have got canceled. No, you wouldn't be considered a threat. So, exactly. So I'm a threat because I'm saying things that people know are innately at least to a degree true. Yeah. To some, to some degree. And you're right. I don't expect everyone to agree with everything I say. Of course, I'm not. That would be completely insane of me. But I also didn't put a magic spell on the world. This is another thing people have to understand. I, at one point, I was the most Googled man on the planet. You don't get there by putting a magic spell in the world or by lying. You get there because you're speaking to people who feel disaffected and speaking to people who feel like they don't have a voice. And there's a whole, there's a large contingent of men out there in the world today who do not want to wear makeup. They don't want to become trans. They don't want to ignore their eyes. They don't want to pretend they're stupid or bad for being a man or wanting a hot girl and a nice car to play sports and being strong. And they, they are looking around and they're saying, oh, finally somebody who understands and gets me. There's a reason why these people find affinity to me. It's not because I'm a magic spell on them. It's because I'm speaking to their natural innate, requ uh, their natural innate desires to, to become a man. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to erase that whole idea from society and they find, they'll feel disaffected. And that's why canceling me has failed because they've deleted me from YouTube, for example, where I had a large channel. And they've tried to, the algorithm has tried to replace it with somebody else. Mm -hmm. But the people they're trying to replace it with aren't telling the truth to these people. They don't feel affinity. You can't just delete me. And then put Jeffrey Star in there saying, put lipstick on and think the girl, the guys are going to be like, well, okay, no, that's not what they want to do. Right? So as hard as the matrix is trying, as hard as the media machine, the propaganda machine is trying to subvert and destroy the minds of the youth. Obviously they have success amongst a small percentage of the population. The innate, the innate, uh, 
tendencies, that's the word I wanted, the innate tendencies of man and the innate tendencies put inside of us by God are remaining, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and it's, it's, a, it's a miracle that people don't understand. That's the reason I am as popular as I am. So I'm speaking to the innate tendencies of young men saying, look, this is how you become strong, successful, and important. That's it. Yeah. And even if they do that, the ideas are still out there. The ideas, the thread that allowed you to gain so many millions of followers and so much interest over such a short period of time, they need to understand that, yeah, you can, you can target this one individual, but the ideas and what's in people's heads, you ultimately can't control that. You can cut out people's tongues, yeah. but the ideas are still there. So address and confront the ideas. Let people talk. Let people debate, see where the truth is. Sometimes it needs to be moderated yeah. a little bit. Okay, oh, maybe, maybe you went too far on that one and it can be walked back a little bit. Oh, you know what? There's that perspective that was forgotten. Let's bring it in. And yeah, I, I agree with you. I think long-term that they're sowing the seeds for their own destruction. They're sowing the seeds for competitors, yeah. obviously, yeah. but also just in terms of the long-term societal trajectory, as scary as it may be, in this moment with all this deplatforming and censoring and so on happening, I'm like, well, you can't get rid of the, you can't get rid of the ideas ultimately. Correct. They can't get rid of the ideas. And, and, and that's the thing that they're, I mean, they're trying very, very hard to, they've been trying for a very long time, but the ideas remain. God, God instilled them inside of us. We have innate understandings and they're struggling very much against it. And that's the reason why when I speak to these innate understandings, they, they don't want people to be reminded of them. Mm -hmm. They literally... I can't imagine being a man and believing or acting the way they want me to act or the things they want me to believe. I'm trying to imagine being myself, but believing the things they want me to believe and acting the way they want me to act. And I literally, I don't know how I'd function in society. Yeah. I think that life is very, very hard for a man. It was certainly very, very hard for me. I can't imagine having no mental resilience. I can't imagine being that fragile. I can't imagine being that offendable. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine believing there are systems which are going to oppress me and prevent me from ever becoming everything I want to be. I can't imagine being that way. If I were to try and absorb all those mentalities and, and then live a normal life, I don't think I could do it. Yeah. I literally, there's a reason why these people end up on ADHD, yeah, to, to anxiety, depression, and I get it because it's just suicide. It's, men, it's literally mental suicide. Mm -hmm. It's suicide. What do you think is the hardest challenge for the average man today? That's a good question. It's a really good question. I think that a lot of people don't understand that it's all of the challenges and struggles that's going to make them, it's either going to make or break them. I read, I don't read studies very often, but I was sent a study about stress from somebody. It's probably the best study I ever read. And it's talked about the placebo effect of stress. Mm -hmm. And it said that there, they took some of the most stressed people in the world, CEOs, et cetera. And the ones who believed that stress was really bad for them were dying earlier because of the cortisol inside of their blood. And they said, the stress is really bad for them, they're having heart attacks. But the ones who believed that stress was good for them and it made them perform, I perform under pressure, stress is good for me, they were living longer. Mm. So the same drug inside of their blood, how they framed it inside of their mind had different effects on their body. So from that point onwards, even though I already thought this way, I knew I was the right way. I knew it was the right way to think innately because I've done pretty good in life that way. But this confirmed it. Every time I feel stressed or under pressure, I get excited. I, I, I hate to not be stressed. I wake up and I'm like, everything's fucked. Good. <laughs> yes. Like, that's just how I am. Right. But it's, it's how you adopt. It's how you look at the problems and how you use them to fuel you. So the question was, what's the problem for the average man today? What's the biggest problem? I think there's a whole host of problems, but what you have to do is frame it inside of your mind and understand that all of those problems are going to allow you, give you the fuel, the unlimited motivation that you need to become a successful and, and, and beautiful individual. Mm. If you frame it in the right way, if you take a man and give him a life shielded from problems and he never has any to face. I guarantee you he's terrible at being a man. The best men in the world have gone through shit. That's just, that's why women love scars. Because they didn't kill you. That's the whole point of it, right? So the best thing you can do as a man is look and go, okay, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard. I feel negative because these are all so difficult. I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. Let me internalize all of that and turn it into a superpower. Let me become genuinely uncomfortable with my situation in life and go and fix things. Because like I said, the universe is absolutely and utterly very giving. And if you truly hated being in the position you were in, you wouldn't be there very long. Yeah. So I think that the, the, the number one problem with, with the world today and the biggest problem that men face isn't the problems themselves. It's just the way that they are been taught to mentally frame issues. People think when bad things happen to them that somehow they're a victim to the universe and bad things only happen to me and this is so terrible. They don't understand that bad things happen to everybody and the most successful person you know had all those probably, maybe even worse, at least the same bad things happen to them. They just framed it differently and used it. That's, that's the difference. So 
I, I don't pray for an easy life. I, I pray for a life of difficulty that allows me to become a better and better person. I, I pray to become more competent to handle problems. I pray to put myself in a position where if the mass media machine attempts its very best to destroy my life, I can laugh and smile from my villa in Dubai. Yeah. This is who I pray to become. I don't pray that nobody hurts me. I pray to be able to fight. So it's just a different mentality. Where did that mentality come from? I've heard, the, I know your background story. I've heard, listened to tons of your interviews. I know the uh, big impact, especially your father yeah. had on your life. Was there a single, or were there a handful of pivotal moments for you where your mindset just shifted? I know you've talked before about being young and seeing people driving by in flashy cars and yeah. it annoying you and not an annoying the people around you. But I I'm really curious to know where the, where the tape, mindset came from it's a good question i think a lot of people build their mindsets around trying to feel good okay. so that's why we were talking earlier about people who want to uh, uh, ignore the idea of personal responsibility or self-accountability because they feel better if they pretend it's not a real thing they feel better if they pretend everything's someone else's fault a lot of people's mental model and how they view the world is based around them feeling as good as possible so when you sit there and talk to somebody who has the mask on and they refuse to believe the the elites are laughing at them it's not because they can't comprehend the ideas. It's because they feel better if they don't believe that they are a clown to the elites. I feel better if this is really all innocent and it's really all about a disease. Mm -hmm. So people are try base they're basing their mindsets around trying to feel good. I have always tried to base my mindset around absolute competence regardless of how I feel. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> there, are, there are certainly disadvantages to that. There are times you're going to be a lot more pessimistic or you're going to be a lot more stressed or a lot more you know pissed off about certain things than others yeah that can be seen as a downside but like i said i use all of those things for unlimited motivation to propel my endless upward trajectory but if you construct a mindset that allows you to be as competent as possible as opposed to feel any different or feel better then you're going to naturally come to the conclusions i've come to you're as competent as possible if you believe you can affect absolutely everything about your life you're as competent as possible if you believe absolutely everything that's happened to you, whether good or bad, is completely your fault. You're as competent as possible if you believe the bad things that happen to you are going to allow you to work harder and become even better. When bad things happen to me, the first thing out of my mouth is good. Good. Andrew, they, they took $10 million out of the bank because they canceled you. Good. Good. That's just my response. Good. Andrew, this happened. Good. Good, good. Now, now I'm really pissed. Good. <laughs> like, like it's, it, that, this mindset I've constructed allows me to be as fearsome a competitor as possible. It allows me to be a feared opponent in any realm of human endeavor. And that's, that's the point of a mindset. Why would you have a mental model or a mentality that made you anything less? In the ultra competitive world that we've just discussed, discussing that everybody wants the things you have, why would you absorb information or construct a mental model that doesn't allow you to be as competitive as possible? I am a feared competitor in anything I do. Anyone who's up against me at anything is going to feel a degree of nervousness just because it's me. Yes. I, it doesn't matter what it is. If you say, look, you're going to go learn how to play piano and you're going to play against someone else who's never played piano and you're going to learn and that guy's Andrew Tate. You're going to be like, oh, for fuck's <laughs> I can't even play piano. But part of them is going to be like, oh, not Tate. Even though, even though I have no piano experience because they just know me. They know my mindset. They know my determination. They know I'm stubborn. They know I don't quit. They know I'm, they know I'm going to win. That's just who I am. So I've constructed a mental model that allows me to be competent and to always succeed. And that's how I've come to the conclusions I've come to. And I truly, once again, don't understand how people go through the world without, with any other mental model. Mm. I get asked all the time, but what do you feel? Or what about happiness or depression? That, that doesn't even... How I feel doesn't cross my mind. I don't know how else to explain it. There are days where I'm pissed off or sad or happy. It doesn't cross my mind. It's just like I woke up, whatever mood I happen to be in, I have things I need to do. It's a busy day. Yeah. Zuby's here soon. I need to go training before he gets here. I had a meeting with the bank at 7.15 a.m. I have shit to do. Like I didn't cross my mind if I was happy, sad, excited. I just had to work. Yeah. So... I, I, I think my mental model to a degree, I'm certainly not a person who doesn't feel emotions because we're all human. I certainly do, but I've never, I've never prioritized them in any regard. I haven't built a mental model that affects, I haven't put them in, in the middle of my mental model and then affected my actions based on how I feel for each one. It's absolutely and completely the opposite. I would love to do a podcast on a day where I'm particularly sad and a podcast on a day when I'm particularly happy. And I guarantee you, you wouldn't be able to tell the fucking difference. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what allows me to be competitive, yeah. right? Because if you're competitive, if you want to be the most competitive predator on the planet, you have to be able to hunt in the day and the night. 
You have to be able to do both. You have to be able to perform when you're happy and sad. You can't, you can't only be able to perform when you're happy. You can't only go to the gym when you're motivated. Mm -hmm. You can't only be a competent person when your life's going well, because when your life's not going well, you're no longer competent. Then you're going to lose to people like me. And it's player versus player. If you're the kind of person who can only do well when you're happy and you're competing against someone like me, who can do well all the fucking time. Guess what? You lose. Mm -hmm. So my mental model, the answer is most of my opinions are just based around constructing a mental model that allows me to be brutally competitive. Yeah. It's why I say depression isn't real. I've argued this point endlessly and I try and explain to people, but they're not smart enough to understand that I don't care if I'm wrong. I don't care. I, I am more competitive as an individual if I don't believe I can become depressed. So I don't give a fuck if I'm right or wrong because no matter what bad happens to me in my life, even if heaven forbid the worst things on earth that could happen happen to me, I could never become clinically depressed because I would never self-diagnose myself as clinically depressed because I don't believe in it. Yeah. I believe that I am currently sad, but I have work to do and eventually I will feel better. Mm -hmm. I will never get to a point of absolute desperation and kill myself because I don't, I'm never going to get to a point of hopelessness because I don't believe in the idea of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. You cannot try and make me adopt thinking that will reduce my competitiveness as an individual. So I don't give a fuck if I'm wrong. I don't believe in it. That's it. End of story. So I don't believe in things that take power away from me. I don't believe in things that make me less competitive. And I don't adopt mental models that make me less competitive. Every single mental model I have are the most efficient ones I could find. To the mental model I found that if I adopt, I become a more fearsome predator. That's it. So this is how I've come to all of my conclusions as an individual. I hear that. Something that I really wanted to discuss with you actually is faith. January, 2019 on that podcast, you explicitly said, I am an atheist I did, yes. and you've definitely been on some type of journey. Again, I've been listening to yeah. interviews and podcasts and there was a, a time where I don't know, first it went, you went from atheism to saying, I think you believe in God. And I think you said Christianity is kind of cucked, but yeah. You'd probably be Islam is the only religion that right. potentially work for you. And then I know you said, started saying that you were a Christian and yeah. Orthodox. And now there's, I'm hearing that you're a Muslim now, but talk me through it. Sure. So firstly, I found scientific proof for God. I'm the man. Everyone's been sitting here, all the atheists saying there's no proof for God. I've got it. Okay, let's stop Here's right the there. scientific let's proof go. for God. I've got all of it. I think it's his third law. It might be a second. We'll have to look it up if it's third or second law. But one of Newton's law is that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force. Anyone who's perspicacious enough to look around them and sees the true evil in the world today understands that there must be an equal and opposite to that true evil, which is good, which means that God must be real. If all of the evil in the world today is the act of the demons and devil, and people will try and pretend it isn't, but if you truly understood things like the elites making you miss your grandma's funeral to laugh at you, like cutting up the, the dicks of kids because of a psyop on the Disney Channel, when you truly understand the level of evil in the world today, then you must understand the only equal and opposite force can be God. Another thing I've argued with atheists about, they don't understand that even God as a concept, even just as a concept, in and of himself becomes a real thing. If you have a thousand people and those thousand people believe in a God, even if there's no man in the sky, but those thousand people believing in a God makes them act righteously, that even as a concept in and of itself, God is a real force. God, the idea as a force is making the people act righteously. So God must exist in some form. Mm -hmm. So I understood that the thing that made me stop being an atheist is simply the amount of evil I saw around me. I was like, if this much evil, if, 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 the sa if Satan is going to appear, <laughs> if Satan appears in front of you, you're going to have to say, okay, well then God must be real. And that's the point we got to. I realized there was so much evil and so much injustice. And what so specifically? Much, it was, it's just the endless, genuine, deliberate attempts at destroying the baseline morality of humans. Just making us believe that to the point where pedophilia is even bad anymore. Mm. Like incest is okay. Like things we know are wrong. We just innately know it's wrong. And they're just trying their best to destroy our moralities. And these moralities were installed in us by somebody or something. I believe God now. Mm. And they are, are attempting to destroy them. Who would attempt to destroy the baseline morality that was God-given? Satan. Mm -hmm. that, so if Satan is trying to destroy our morality, then God must be real. Yes. So equal and opposite forces, Newton's law proved God. So once I realized God was real, it's like, okay, then you have all these different interpretation, interpretations of God, which is interesting. What's interesting about the Christianity-Islamic debate is that they're both Abraham, uh, Abrahamic. Mm -hmm. And also people said to me, well, you're not from the Middle East. Why would you be Muslim? And it kind of makes me laugh. I say, Christianity, didn't that all happen in Palestine? <laughs> like all of it comes from the same place, right? 
I'm not a scholar, so I don't want to get on the scol scholastic route, but Christianity and, and Islam have a lot in common. They worship a lot of the same people. Uh, Islam has another book, uh, the last book, which was the seal. And truthfully, if, if we're going to step away from the scholarship angles and talk about the Bible and the Quran, etc., I look at it in a different angle. I look at the world through a very realistic understanding of force. And I understand that if you're not prepared to defend something, it will be taken and destroyed. I understand that, like we said earlier, violence is the underpinning of all civilized societies. Even when I look at a big tree, I see violence. I understand that tree is the biggest because it destroyed all the other trees around it. If you're not prepared to defend or fight, then you're going to be destroyed. So when I look at Christianity in its current form, I don't think that they can be right in terms of their interpretation of, interpretation of God, because if they were correct, God would give them the strength to defend themselves. And they don't. Christianity doesn't mean anything anymore. If the Christian interpretation of God was correct, then God would be giving them the strength to resist, but they don't resist anything. I don't believe Christians have preserved a single thing in modern time. I know in America, there's this hard line Christians who believe that they're trying hard, they are still failing on a daily basis. And in most of the world, especially in Europe, Christianity is absolutely not really a joke. The thing that actually finally converted me was about three weeks ago. I'll send you the TikTok. It was the first drag queen Methodist preacher. Oh, geez, man. Yeah, but, but this is the point. If you're, if, you, if you're tolerant of everything, yeah. then you stand for nothing. Yeah. So once you say I'm a Christian, but I tolerate everything under the name of tolerance, well, then you no longer have any beliefs. Mm -hmm. So if you have no beliefs then all of it is garbage. If you're the only way you can worship a God is if that God gives you instructions. And if those instructions are adhered to and respected by the followers. And also if the followers of this, of the, of the particular God, I'm not going to say names, stick up for and defend those beliefs and are prepared to be ridiculed or prepared to be stigmatized. And to, like I said er earlier, a bottom line of, of society's violence to fight, to defend those beliefs. If you have a belief system that nobody will fight to defend, then you don't have beliefs. Just like feminism. If nobody fights to defend it, it goes away. Like Christianity, if nobody stands up for the rules, it goes away. There is one religion on the planet today in which people stand up for the rules. They stick by the rules. They refuse to be mocked and they refuse to completely throw away their values and belief systems under the guise of tolerance because mm -hmm. they don't want to be tolerant of everything. They said, no, we're not tolerant of everything because when you're tolerant of everything, you have no morality. That's what we talked about earlier. Baseline morality means there's some things you're intolerant of because you're a moral person. So to be moral, you have to be intolerant to a degree. There's one religion on the planet, and that's Islam. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna worship God, and I'm gonna worship God in a way which is true to my own personal beliefs, also what I understand about the world, what I understand about strength, what I understand about defending ideals, then there's only one religion on earth I can respect. I can't respect Christians anymore. They set Notre Dame on fire. They didn't, they, imagine that was the other way around. Like, think about it for a second. Think about for a second. I say this all the time. People walk around with T-shirts. Jesus is gay in, t in TVs. They're making fun of Christianity on TV. They're mocking your God in front of your face and Christians don't say a word. They don't say a word. They will take a, a, a preacher of whatever background which directly contradicts your holy book and put him in a church to teach to your children and they will not say a fucking word. And then they sit there and go, well, they say tolerant because they're cowards. But the truth is this. If your interpretation of God and the world was right, I don't believe God would allow you to sit there and be such a fucking coward. That's what I don't believe. I don't think what? that God would allow you to do that. I think he'd say, no, you need to defend our ideals because our ideals are good for humanity and Christians fail to defend them. So if they fail to defend them, they do not exist. There's only one religion left on the planet. Wow. That's Islam. That's it. <laughs> but it's the only religion. It's no, the dude, only no, religion. No, it's, it's, it's so, the it's only so only interesting one. because you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a Christian. Okay. Um, have been. Lifelong, right? Yep. And so in terms of the conclusion, I obviously have a different conclusion, but I totally get what you're saying and myself have and have made over the years many of the same criticisms, particularly in the Western Anglosphere, yeah. right? And I think, I don't think the greatest threat to Christianity is atheism or atheists or other religions, I think the greatest threat to Christianity is this weird, hyper-watered-down, hyper-diluted, so-called, they call it progressive Christianity. I'm like, that's not a thing. Do you know why everyone's... Right? If you have a drag queen in church, yeah. if you have a rainbow flag in church, we're not saying out in yeah. the city at some private establishment, yeah. in your church, right. 
I'm like, you know, people like that, as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, that is undermining the... And this is the point. The reason so many people are happy to stand up and say, yeah, I'm a Christian, is because it takes zero effort. Like most Christians in the West, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church and I'm a hoe. And, and then, like, of course you're a Christian with an OnlyFans. Yeah. You're like, it doesn't make sense. But that's why they get to say not, it. I want, I, I want you to be wrong. But, yeah, but it's true. Like, so, like so, so, so <laughs> if you're tolerant of everything, you stand for absolutely nothing. And this is my problem with Christianity. If they're going to stay, if they're going to refuse to defend their beliefs, then they don't have beliefs. And that's, and that's the bottom line. And they do it under this guise, you're right, this hyper watered down tolerance garbage. No, I want to worship God in a way that takes effort. I want to have to give up things or do things in my life and actually understand that there's certain things in life, there's certain moral lines that can't be crossed. And I also want to have a religious system that people don't mock. Yeah. I'd be in, I, being a Christian, and absolutely don't mean to disrespect you, my friend, no, 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 but I when I was a Christian, it's almost embarrassing to say sometimes, you're like, you're a Christian, really? This is Christian? Like, and, and what's most crazy is this. When, when you understand that the only antidote to all of this insanity we've been discussing this entire podcast is God. Like, there, it's only the God that gives a baseline morality that can resist this total enslavement. Yes. We're now in Dubai. There are people out there in the desert heat working on construction sites for $200 a month. And if you were to go off from a million dollars to insult the prophet, they would not do that. No, they, would, they wouldn't even cross their mind, no. right? There's baseline morality installed inside of the populace via religion. So if you understand that the whole point of a religion is to preserve the baseline morality of humanity and that Christianity doesn't do that because they're so tolerant that their baseline moralities are all ignored, then, can, can then I, it's not real. Can I ask something? Sure. Because I think specifically this view of Christianity is largely coming from the modern West and especially the, yep. the Anglosphere yep. where the, the dilution has been so heavy. I mean, yep. if you look at Christianity around the world yep. – Across it's Africa, different. within the Middle East, so on. It's, Agreed. It's, it's very different. And I, and I lived in Romania, so uh, Romania is a very Christian country, and there it's Orthodox Christian, and, and there it's much stronger than it is in the West. That is true. However, I still believe, even in all areas, that it is in a, in a decline. I still think that the as a whole, the idea is – the idea of Christianity isn't respected. I'll, I'll simplify it a simple way. Sure, if I were to say to you right now, you had to say a sentence that pissed off every Christian in the world or say a sentence that pissed off every Muslim in the world, mm -hmm. for your own personal preservation, yeah. you would choose to piss off the Christians. 100%. So would I. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and that means that there's, there's a belief system out there which is fearsome. And I think that God, in fact, it even says it in the Bible, is a fearsome, jealous God. Mm -hmm. So if God is a powerful man you don't want to upset, then I think the the truest way to worship him is to worship him in a way which is respected to the point that nobody wants to upset the believers of said religion. So I think it's all about strength and I think it's about uh, moral codes and I think it's about genuine effect on the world. This is the reason I, I gravitated towards Islam because I just understood how fervently they believe and I believe in God completely and absolutely. And uh, I liked I liked to see there were red lines. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a lot of Christians in the world who would also like to see red lines. Absolutely. But 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 there isn't, and yeah. there's too many who don't. I think. Yeah. What what's what's weird with I think what's happening with with Christianity is, we how would I put this? Trying to make it living in a it, it say you live in the USA, yeah. USA or UK, yeah. right? A so-called liberal, democratic yeah. country where, of course, you have freedom of speech, you have freedom of religion, so on. You know, you they're they're somewhat more libertarian societies, right? So there's a separation between these things. And I think an interesting question for whether someone's a, you know, certainly an interesting question for, for Christians, but whatever someone's belief system is, where's that, how do you balance these things, yeah. right? How do you balance religious faith yeah. and the respect for religion and ultimate respect for God and so on yeah. with also absolute freedom of speech and freedom of or from religion yeah. and this super inclusive everyone do it go out it is it's different. it's a it's a weird it's a weird line i don't i don't know the answer it's actually something i've been pondering for quite yeah. a while because i think when when people were just generally more sane yeah. <laughs> right? like just going back even i don't know 20 years ago yeah. where you didn't really have to the evil agenda that you talk about yeah. Right, it wasn't being pushed. Like even if you look at some of the new new laws and bills that they're having to draft in the USA, yeah. 
I'm like, you shouldn't need to pass a law for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People should just inherently know yeah. that, okay, well, you, you just don't do that thing, yeah. right? You don't need a law on the book. Like, come on, that's stupid. Like, you don't, you don't need a law. But now it's like they're having to pass legislation to say, oh, you know, I actually don't teach six-year-olds about, like, yeah. you know, sexuality and sex and yeah. kinks. You shouldn't need a law for that. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a very interesting discussion because I, I share, as, as, especially as a Christian, <laughs> I, I share a lot, of those, a lot of those frustrations. And it's like, how, how is that needle to be, to be, to be threaded? Yeah. And these churches where they've just gone fully woke yeah. and there's no cross in the church, yeah. but there's a rainbow flag, there's a BLM flag, there's a trans flag. Yeah. Like, the, to me, these, these things aren't meant to mix. I, I completely, and, and this is the unfortunate reality is that if you have a belief system, any belief system, you're intolerant to a degree. To some extent. Because cause you believe in something. Sure. If you believe in something, there must be a degree of intolerance. It, it, that's all it is. If I believe that meat is better than fish, then I'm intolerant of fish to a degree, right? Like, this is just humanity, but this whole new guise of tolerance, most people don't understand the true psyop. The true psyop is trying to convince you to be so tolerant that you have no morality. Yes. You're, they're not trying to convince you to be tolerant so you're a moral person you accept others. That's mm -hmm. a lie. They're trying to convince you to be so tolerant that you have no morality at all. You're tolerant of everything. Sure, take all my money, lock me in my house. Sure, mess my kids' brains up in school. Sure, I'm tolerant. I'm tolerant. No, you're a dummy. Mm -hmm. So that's what this whole tolerance disguise is. It's to try and make sure you have no baseline morality, to make sure you have no opinion, and you offer no resistance to the enslavement by the machine. Yes. That's what they want. And this is why they keep talking about tolerance so hard. Most people don't even realize, most parents aren't even aware of the fact that they don't even raise their own kids. Mm -hmm. You don't raise your children. You go to work all day. Your wife goes to work all day because they've inflated you into the ground. It's no longer just a man working. Your woman doesn't get to stay home and instill the beliefs that you and her share. No, your kids go to school and the school tells them what to fucking believe. And when they finish school, they sit on the internet and the internet tells them what to believe. And they sit there and they're just told what to believe from people other than you. And they're told that you need to be tolerant of these beliefs no matter what they are. Why are they doing this? So they can brainwash your children. I've seen videos on YouTube of children arguing with their own parents about things. And they said, where'd you hear that? School. Mm -hmm. You don't even raise your own kids anymore. And when I sit here and try and teach your kids something, I don't know, which is basically completely normal in the world was saying, like you said, yeah. the things I say, if I said 20 years ago, everyone would go, duh. Yeah. I literally, I say water is wet. Mm -hmm. And people are like, whoa, intolerant. It's crazy. So when I stand up and try and resist that programming, they delete me. But all the people who are for the agenda and for the system stay. Little Naz, the, the rapper, he gets to have sex with the devil, mm -hmm. right? And they'll sit there and they'll have full-grown adults telling your six, seven-year-old kid that if they feel like something else that day, then they get to be something else and they should have surgery that's going to affect them forever. Mm -hmm. And they're going to poison your kids' minds. You don't even raise your own children anymore. It's a fucking scary world. And, and, and this, is the, this is the base reality of what's happening out there. And they're, they're going to do all of it. Every single bit of it, all of this evil is done, all this degeneracy is done under the guise of tolerance. Oh, yeah. Tolerance is a scam. Yeah. You have to be intolerant at a point. I'm not saying be intolerant of everything. I'm not saying be a bad person. Yeah. I'm not saying attack anybody or hurt anybody. I'm saying that you need to get, at least become a point where you as an individual are intolerant of certain ideals. Even if somebody else has different ideals. I don't give a shit what a full-grown adult wants to do with his life. Fine. But do not bring it into my life. Mm -hmm. Do not affect my children. Mm -hmm. Do not infect my circle. I am intolerant of X ideals and everyone I love and care about who I have res am responsible for will also be intolerant. Mm -hmm. That's what's scary. This is what I say all the time. I have no problem with LGBT. No problem. I don't care. You're a full-grown adult and you can do whatever you want. Yeah. That's your prerogative. I believe you should be able to do that. That's fine. I don't agree with you programming other people's children. That's why I don't agree with, because you didn't have kids. Yes. You can program your own children. That's fine. If you decided to have sex in a particular way that prevents you from having children, that is once again your problem. But if you manage to have kids, you can program them however you see fit. You can instill your worldviews in them as I will instill the worldviews I have in my children. I do not think it's fair for me and my wife to be working our asses off because our, our currency is inflated because of, of fucking the global elites making sure we're barely on the bread line. And then you walk into a school with my children and telling my children things that I don't believe. That's where I draw the line. I become intolerant when you want to infect my kids with ideals that I disagree with. But if I say that, I'm a bigot, yep. right? And people want me to say, no, Andrew, be so tolerant that you will accept 
anybody saying anything to your children and ruining their minds. And when I say ruining, yes, in my worldview, they would be ruined. Yes. I had kids so I could make them like me. I look after them. I pay for them. I will raise them to be like me. That is my prerogative. And this is the whole thing behind tolerance. Tolerance in and of itself, the whole reason they push this, the whole reason they're so fucking desperate for people to become tolerant is because they don't want you to resist and become to a point where you stand up and wake up and say, no, that is unacceptable. Yes. And that's, that's the scam of it. Yeah. Tolerance is only a virtue up to an extent. And then beyond that, it's a, it's a vice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cowardice. It's cowardice. Yeah, yeah, it's cowardice. And the truth is it's not tolerance unless it's two way. Yeah. Yeah. It's not tolerance. We, we talked about this on the previous podcast actually years ago. It's not tolerance unless it's reciprocated. So we see people are not, you know, I love the fact that, you know, due to our ex inclusion policy, we need to exclude tape. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> due to our diversity policy, yeah. we need to shut down that opinion. Yeah. Due to our, you know, our tolerance. Oh no, we need to be, in, it's called, it's why actually the concept is actually called repressive tolerance. Yeah. If I like that. Yeah. That's, repressive that's tolerance. It's a, it's a far leftist term. That's actually the strategy they use. Yeah. It's called repressive tolerance. So they only tolerate what is within their sphere and are hyper intolerant, but then they'll be preaching using the word. And so it's actually a very effective, effective. The leftist idea of tolerance, the leftist idea of diversity or inclusion is everybody who looks different, but thinks the same. But if you don't think the same, then they become the most intolerant people on the planet instantly. Yes. Right? <laughs> so you're right. It's not reciprocating. It's all a fucking scam. Yeah. And, uh, it, and it's dangerous. The, the, the problem we have, the reason they're going to try and kill me sooner or later is because I'm inspiring people to stand up and say, no, I'm intolerant of this idea. I'm sorry. You can go do it. That's fine. I wish you the best. I don't wish you any harm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're a sovereign individual who will make their own choices. And I hope you live a long and fantastic and beautiful life. But me, my people, my family, my team, we're intolerant of X idea. Leave us alone. Sure. That's it. And, and, and they, they see that as a threat because they don't want me to inspire people to think that way. I'm sure you've been asked this question before, but what do you think is the greatest misconception about you? Especially now. Yeah, I... It's kind of interesting because as a professional, when I was saying earlier, like I, I believe every single thing about me and every single thing that's happened in my life is my own fault. I accept responsibility for all of it. There are some misconceptions that I kind of understand. And there are also some, there are some attitudes about me that I understand why people have them. I know that they're wrong, but I understand why people have them. Like, I'll be honest with you. I understand and I, I intrinsically believe one of the reasons why people think I'm such a bad person is because of, it's because I'm scary. I'm big, I'm aggressive when I talk. I live in Romania. I'm a professional fighter on my Instagram, run around with guns. I, I, I literally think people look at me and go, bad guy. I look like a bad guy. I, I completely, I'd be ignorant. I'd be driving my, my Lamborghini and I, I'd be, I'd be ignorant to sit and say, I don't look like a bad guy. Right? So I'm a professional and I don't approach, approach things emotionally. I approach them very professionally. And I understand there are some people who believe I'm a bad guy simply because I look like one mm -hmm. and because they're not capable of understanding my words through the tone in which they're delivered. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that. That's the first misconception is that I'm a bad guy because I'm not a bad person at all. I'm actually completely the opposite. I'm the guy, if anybody who is close to me in their life, they have all said this to me at some point, you're the guy everyone calls. Yes. It doesn't matter it, what goes wrong in anybody's life who knows me. It doesn't matter if their bank accounts gets frozen. It doesn't matter if their car breaks down. It doesn't matter if they got kidnapped. Their first and only call would be me. Arrested me. I'm that guy. Call Andrew. It'll be fixed. Yeah. Right? So I'm the absolute opposite of a bad guy. I'm the best person someone could possibly fucking know. That's the first thing. So that's the first misconception. The second misconception is that I'm hateful. Everything I say comes from a place of genuinely loving and caring about humanity. Everything I say is comes from a place of genuinely trying to make the world a better place. I'm genuinely philanthropic. And if I say something which is deemed intolerant, it's for the reasons we just discussed. It's because I actually believe it's good for humanity as a whole. And there's always an equal and opposite force. And, and, and these people out here trying to say you should be tolerant of everything, like we just discussed, are genuinely the evil ones. I am not an evil person. I'm not a bad person. The last thing I am is hateful. I am a man. And as a man, I'm not going to apologize for being having a temper. I'm not going to apologize for understanding my physicality and standing up for my views. I'm not going to apologize for understanding, like I said earlier, if I walk into a place and tell someone to get fucked over a mask, they're going to be afraid of me. I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for any of those things because I'm a fucking full grown man and I'm a man who lives in the real world, but I'm not a hateful person. There's no hate inside of me. Everyone who I'm close to, I love my family. I love nobody close to me dislikes me. And the scariest thing is a lot of the people on the internet who hate me don't understand that since this massive fame kicked off, let's say a year ago, since I became the most Google man on the planet, I have must have taken 60 to 70,000 pictures of people from the street 
And I must have spoken to maybe a quarter of a million people on the street. And I can promise you now, with God as my witness, I've never had a single negative interaction ever once. Yeah, ever. So these hateful people on the internet are a very vocal minority because the large contingent of the world, the majority of the populations have no problems with our ideas, right? Because they know we're right. And they like us. And even if they don't agree with everything we say, they like that we stand up for ourselves and that we articulate our ideas and we take the time out of our day to sit and explain to people of what's happening in the world. But you know what else it is? It's that you're honest. We live in this world of manipulation and lies and deceit. You turn on the TV, you listen to politicians. They're just lying, 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 lying. And people don't get mad at that, right? And so even if someone thinks you're wrong or you've reached the wrong conclusion, they know that that's what you actually believe. That's what you think. You'll repeat it. You'll explain it. You're not trying to shut down everyone else who doesn't agree with it. You're happy to talk to them, sit down with them, debate them, whatever it is. And I'm like, I will always respect someone who's like that. Right. Because that's why it's like, cool. Well, you know, there's people out there, you know, we're, we're aligned on a lot of stuff. Um, but, you know, there's people out there who I disagree with on a lot of things. But I'm like, but they're, but they're honest. Yeah. They're real. Like, you won't, you won't put a fact in front of their face and they, they totally deny it. Or they'll say something and I ask, okay, well, why do you think that? Like, I might disagree with how they got there or the, con but I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I get what you're, I see how you've arrived at that conclusion, you know? And to me, the people who are super deceptive and dishonest are those who are trying to shut down all the conversation, shut down the debate, censor this person, deplatform any idea that does not go oh, you mean along with. Oh, you mean the tolerant ones? The tolerant ones. The tolerant ones want to shut up anybody who has an yeah. idea they don't agree with. Isn't that funny? Exactly. I mean, and, and the way they've done it now with so-called the science, right? <laughs> Not to go back into it too much, but it's like, yo, if it's science, you can question it. You can challenge it. In the past, scientists would be like, look, this is, this is, my, this is my hypothesis. This is what I think. Prove me wrong. Show me how I'm wrong. Let's go through this. Now it's like, okay, this is what we think. Like, we need to censor. Oh, there's another doctor on Twitter? Yeah. Do you disagree? Get rid of him. Oh, there's a, there's a study coming out. Nope, get rid of that study. And here's where we come full circle. This is why I say we live in a matrix. Yeah. Because our body heat and our efforts and our ingenuity are being used by the machines. They are making us go to work and be as the, the hardest working, smartest versions of ourselves. They're using our bodies, but they want our minds to live in a false reality. They don't want you to understand the truth about anything. They're giving you a computer-generated false reality for you to buy into, to occupy your mind long enough to keep you functional enough to work, but not sentient enough to understand you're being fucked, and to just sit there until you pay and pay taxes until you die. That's all they want. They don't want people to truly understand anything about the world. There's a reason why you go to school and you do not learn about taxes or money or banking or inflation or any of the fucking shit that's going on now. The reason you don't learn the true version of history It's the reason when you watch the news now, they don't tell you the truth about anything that's happening ever. And the only thing I can say to people is, if you know they've manipulated you in the past, if you're not so ignorant as to believe that you've been told the truth the entire time, if you understand reality and know that they've manipulated you in the past, why do you think they're not doing it right now? Why do you think they won't do it again? It's all a lie. Everything's a lie. Head to toe, it's a lie. It may be a scary idea, but I promise you, the medical system just proved itself to be fucking corrupt. The judicial system proved itself to be corrupt. The fucking financial system proved itself to be corrupt. The legal system proved itself to be corrupt. Every system you use and live under that is designed to protect you is corrupt. Even me before COVID, I would—I don't want to go back into that subject because I should go forever. But even before COVID, I would think, well, the medical, the medical system is probably not that corrupt. I mean, I knew it was corrupt because of healthcare and, and, and American prices are too high. But I thought, surely, you know, the World Health Organization, they're just a bunch of doctors who want to help people. In my ignorance, how foolish of me to not understand that they are funded and they're funded by people who are corrupt and they're funded by big pharma and big pharma wants money. And then they realize they don't just want money. They want power and they want influence. and They want to lobby government. And they want to control things. And so it's like every single organization on the face of the planet is corrupt. This is why I say to people, I say, listen, and I'm going to say this on this podcast now because I say it on every other one. I would never, ever kill myself. I truly believe they're going to come and they're going to try and kill me on a long enough time frame because they tried to shut me up and I won't shut up. They're going to try and put me in jail. They're going to kill me. And I would never kill myself under any circumstances ever. And the reason I say this, and I say this to people, and they go, but what can they put you in jail for? And I'm like, how ignorant are you in your ignorance to believe they need a reason? You believe it's fair. You believe I can get a lawyer and prove myself innocent. That's not how it works. They decide you're guilty long before and they find a reason why. And it doesn't matter what you do about it. You will pay the fucking price. It's not fair. None of it is. Every single system's corrupt. It actually annoys me when people say that to me. Well, just get a lawyer. Why? They can't put you in jail if you're innocent. Yes, they fucking can. And that's what people don't understand about the world. They can and they do and they fucking will. And that's what's scary. I think it's so far removed from most people's reality that they can't really comprehend it. Yeah. 
even even with the the deplatforming and all those, it, it's too far removed. If you've got a big audience, hundreds of thousands, millions of people on social media, which I mean, what percentage of the population has that? Yeah, it's true. Right? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's it's a tiny tiny sliver. So even to be able to relate to that, yeah. um, or even to understand the impact of it, because yeah. some people are just like, oh, it's just Twitter, it's just Facebook, it's just Instagram. It's like, yeah, you have forty followers, so yeah. you if you lost your Twitter. Yeah. It's not a big blow yeah. in any type of way, yeah. right? You haven't got people out there who you're influencing and you're getting out a message and so on. So people, I think people just don't understand it. because They don't understand – what, what people don't understand is why influence is so important. This is why I'm saying here and adamantly stating that they're going to try and kill me if they're not already think, thinking about it already because I know how influential I am. And influence is everything. The reason there is a war right now in regions of Ukraine is so that somebody gets to be in charge and influence the population. He gets to influence how they think. He gets to influence the language they speak, influence the currency they use, influence. There are machines of war and destruction in the fields of Ukraine right now and thousands of men a day dying for influence. The media machine, the only reason they pump it into every airport and put it all over the TV and convince you to believe in it is so they can influence you. The only reason you go to school is so the teacher can influence your mind. The reason the algorithms of social media platforms decide to show you the videos they show you is to influence you. People say, oh, you had a big following, but that's not enough reason to kill you. Oh, you mean I could influence the world? That's not enough reason to kill me. All they fucking want to do is influence people. It's the number one most important thing on the planet. Influence is all this has ever been about. So when you become the most Googled man on earth and you're influencing people in the opposite direction, it would be ignorant for me to see and not understand there are people sitting around thinking, how do we make this guy go away? Mm. And the answer was cancel me and they failed. So what's answer two? It's, it's a scary realization, but it's the truth. I know this intimately. It's absolutely not only a bottom line fact. It's a fact. But this is where we come into what we were saying earlier, again, about baseline moralities. As a religious man, I can't sit and lie. I can't sell my soul and ignore my own eyes. I can't sit and tell people things that I know aren't true because then I'm going to struggle with myself. The battle continues. You either fight against them or you fight against yourself. You have to make a choice. I can't fight against my soul and my heart and my mind. I want them to be on my side, so I must fight against the Matrix. And if they kill me, I didn't kill myself. And that's the end of it. And I'm going to do my very, very best to stay alive. But if they really want you, they'll get you. We need to protect Top G. Do our best. Bro, honestly, um, the way I, well, something I want to say to you is I think, you know, as a fellow believer of God, firstly, I'm, I'm glad you found God. Thank you. That's, a, that's actually a major. That's a major deal. Um, I love seeing people who have big followings and influence speaking about god in a positive light and i think the, that whole concept especially in in the west we people have like run away and shied away from it for for so long and i think we're seeing we're, we're seeing the consequences yeah. of that I'm playing out right I, I, i've said joked before that we live in one of the most religious times ever but one of the most godless right uh people are latching on to all these they're making up their own secular religions and they're they're hyping that up but i believe that god has given you uh as you've humbly acknowledged already, a extraordinarily unique set of talents and abilities and eloquence and resources. And I pray that, number one, you live a obviously long and healthy life, yeah. inshallah. Um, but also that that is used as, I think it's already being used as a net positive. Yeah. But man, I, I think the amount of good that someone like yourself can do in this world. And I hope other people recognize this as well, regardless of what you, someone may currently think of Andrew Tate. Um, I want people to recognize that. I think people like yourself, you're, you're so, I think you know your voice is important, yeah. but I think it's even more important than, than, than you realize. I think over the course of the next years and decades, as we all go into the future and we're living in this brave new world of social media and influencers and this and that, those voices, those independent voices are just going to become more and more important. And there's going to be people out there pushing all kinds of negativity and degeneracy and outright evil. Right. And I think there's going to be people pushing back on the other side and man, may, may God use you to do. Well, absolutely. And with great power comes great responsibility and the battle's just begun. And uh, I think the lines are being drawn now in real time. So I'm, I'm glad we're on the same side, friend. 
Awesome, man. Before we finish up, Andrew, where can people find you online? I know you're on Rumble. Where can they find you? Yes. So I'm on rumble.com slash Tate speech. That's my YouTube replacement. It's better than YouTube in every way. I recommend absolutely everybody move over to Rumble because there is no point putting your time and effort and life into a platform that will delete you at random, right? So what did the Bible say? You're a Christian. It said, build your house on stone, not sand, yes. right? So Rumble's the stone. So I'm on rumble.com slash Tate speech. And once again, I implore everybody to do the same. I'm on Getter instead of Twitter, at Cobra Tate. Uh, so I'm on both of these platforms, and it's very refreshing to speak freely. It's so nice to just type and not have to worry about if it's going to get reported. That I just tell the truth. So on both of these platforms, also, my personal website is CobraTate.com. Uh, on CobraTate.com, I have a newsletter. I have an email list you can sign up for. It's completely free. Uh, I send out an email every single day discussing some of the topics we talked about, mental framing and that kind of thing. So on CobraTate.com and also the War Room and the Real World are two things I own and I operate, which are based around finance and, and network, which are also available on CobraTate.com. You can find out more about them there. So that's where that's where I am on the internet. And uh, those three places, Gitter at CobraTate, Rumble at Tate Speech, and CobraTate.com, they can't delete me from. So that's where I'm going to stay. My man, I appreciate you, bro. Cheers, bro. Thank you.